Right, that's it, Terry. Come on, try and pack it in. Okay. Do, you, do you need these many underpants? Yes, I do. We're going away for a lovely weekend, Terry. Uh, Come on, let's get it on. Oh, hang on. Oh, oh hang on. Uh, Alexa, stop. Excuse me. So, oh, Jamie. We weren't expecting this. What's going on here? Oh, well, I thought you said we had a week off, so yeah. Terry and I are just packing for a nice few days away. Yeah. Uh, I got me cosy and everything. You said the treat for, you know, the 50th anniversary podcast would uh, be that we had a week off. I definitely... I No! What? We've got... We've got this, no, this is the 50th thing. We've got to do it. And I didn't say that anyway. You did. Well, I spray no. And everything. I, yeah, Richard, I said... Salon. I said yeah. you've got a weak cough. Oh, a week, I did have a weak cough when we oh. last spoke. I thought you said that was a week. the that was the thing <sighs> you should get treated. Right. Oh, it wasn't a treat having a week off. You thought I should be treated for a week cough. Yeah. Oh. Terry, just what slide. What am I going to do with my water wings now? Yeah, slide the suitcase back under the bed. Oh. Deflate the water wings, Terry. Yeah. There's things oh. to do. So, oh. well, listen, what while we're here, we, work? we might as well do pod 50, mightn't we? Might as well. It's the 50th Jerry Anderson Podcast! Let's get started. Let's go. Spectrum is green. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. Here we are. Look, Look it's Terry Adlam. Goodness oh, me, was, where did I he just, come from? I just waved there on a podcast. Yeah, that, don't do that. That's not going to yeah. work on no, audio, Terry. No. It was a good wave, though. Yeah. I, can, I can put <laughs> a hope. swishing sound effect in, Terry, so that they'll hear your <laughs> glorious wave. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, Hi, everyone. Yeah, here we are for, amazingly, the 50th Jerry Anderson podcast. Now, that's quite a big deal, isn't it, Jamie? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's it's not as big a deal as 100 or well, whatever, but it's it's halfway there, yeah, yeah. so well yeah, done us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, here we are. So thank you to everyone at home for joining us for the Jerry Anderson podcast. You know what to expect. It's slightly different this week in that we don't have our usual featured interview because for the last few weeks we've been asking you, dear listeners, to send us some questions for Jamie or me or for Terry, and we've been asking you to hashtag them, hashtag 50 questions, over on Twitter, and, and have. we have got just about 50 questions. Questions. Wow. Amazing. Uh, ranging from Jamie, your favourite shows, my favourite shows, Terry, how you got involved with Terror Hawks, Jamie, what do you remember as a kid? All this sort of stuff will be coming up later, suggested by you, our delightful listeners. We've also got, uh, don't worry, everybody's favourite, the randomizer will be here, yeah. Chris Dale, of course. Uh, we've got some newsy news, news, news. And then after about an hour and a half or so, we'll be saying goodbye and uh, being on our way. Yeah. Think that's, that's about it. Yeah. That's right, Richard. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah, that is it, is it? That is it. There's literally it. There's n- li- nothing else that's going to happen in this. Now, Jamie, you can episode. tell Terry, <laughs> by the look in his eyes, slightly <laughs> miffed. Because what have I forgotten? You've t- forgotten the wonderful Fab Facts. <laughs> oh, Thanks, wonderful Terry. Fab facts. I like Fab Facts. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. And um, you said that wonderful with a lot of, you know, it, well, yeah. Back to reward winning. <laughs> yes. I do think, however, before we go any further, Jamie, we should really introduce ourselves. I'd like to try something yes. a little bit different. If you don't mind, just for our fiftieth podcast, um, uh, Alexa, who is Jamie Anderson? Jamie Louise Anderson is an American professional oh, snowboarder. Oh no, Alexa, stop. Okay, sorry about that. We'll, we'll try this. Uh, Alexa, who is Richard James? Richard James is a bespoke saddle row tailors and contemporary. Uh, uh, oh, this isn't going very well. Alexa, stop. Sorry. Okay, we'll try one more time. Uh, Alexa. Who is Terry Adlam? Adam Terry is a former American football offensive What? Tycoon. What? Was no, no. No. Alexa, Alexa, I, stop. I gave that up years ago. <laughs> put put well. her in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, sorry, that didn't go quite as well as expected, Jamie, so I think we better do it the old-fashioned way. No, right. Well, <laughs> uh, I can see over there Terry Adlam. Yeah, here he is. That's me. I'm Terry Adlam. I can see over there Jamie Anderson, son of Jerry, a legendary TV producer. That's me, Jamie Anderson, not the legendary TV producer. And who can you see, Terry, sitting next to you? <laughs> <laughs> He's not playing ball, is he? I'm Richard James, uh, actor, bon viva, after-dinner speaker. Playwright. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Author, uh, novelist. Olivier Award nominee. Olivier yeah. Award yeah. nominee. Yeah. Let's yeah. not forget that. Should have worn my pin badge. And here we all are for the Jerry Anderson podcast. Not only that, our 50th. Our golden. Yeah. And actually, Terry, just, just hold up a little something that you brought. Uh... Right. Now, we'll t- actually, we'll take a picture of this and put it on the, uh, on the group. Careful now. <gasps> oh, a cake. Make, made by hand by my daughter, Roslyn. Oh, thank you, yeah. Roslyn. That's amazing. Although it's difficult for me to fully enjoy the cake when I'm hundreds of miles away from you. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll send you a bit by yeah, um, yeah by post pigeon. Pigeon. So yeah. that's a lovely Thunderbird two cake, a nice little round green cake with a, the old Thunderbird two logo that's amazing. on. Amazing. It's all our own design. So we'll yeah. enjoy well that. Well done, Roslyn. Yeah, we'll have a bit in your honour, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll eat the whole thing in my honour. Yeah, more than likely. Brilliant. Well, thanks for that. Yeah. Really appreciate yeah. it. Here we go. Uh, in the meantime, of course, you must subscribe to us on whatever platform you're listening to us on you must rate us and review us and share us mm. with all your friends and for those of you that voted for us in the british podcast awards well thanks <laughs> what you you? yeah don't say it like that they did try <laughs> yeah but yeah. congratulations to george the poet who i think won the listener's choice prize award we yeah. must have been in the mix somewhere yeah. we? Well, we weren't in the top 20 that's all oh. that we can say but but there were thousands of podcasts of that were voted for so let's assume that we were in the top 21 Exactly. Uh, and we know people are loving the show because you're telling us. You're telling us on Twitter using the hashtag Jerry Anderson Podcast. And you're also telling us on our fancy, sparkly Facebook listeners group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash podsterons, where people are posting their quizzes, their top tens, uh, their what is this uh, still from uh, competitions as well. Uh, and I'll be reading out a few messages from the uh, Facebook group a little later on. Brilliant. Terry, yeah. are you in the in the group are you, are you a group I member? am I'm I'm one of the founder members I think I've got oh, that good. funny I'm glad to hear it. yeah so um, yeah I like to join in sometimes and yeah. uh, I think it's it's Tom Hodden he yes. does these wonderful cryptic clues and yes. and some Awful puns, a man after Simon, like, that's right. Own a heart. I was yeah. going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Competition there, Terry. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Enjoy those. Exactly. So there we go. So should we, should we start with some of our wonderful questions, Jamie? Yeah, I was going to say, we should, to... Should, well, yeah. we should explain to listeners that we, rather than do 50 questions all in one block, yeah. we thought we'd spread it throughout the podcast for yeah. your uh, listening entertainment. So exactly. yes, why don't we start with some of our hashtag 50 questions? Go okay. for it, Terry. I'm going to go. Go on. Now, Terry's got a bowl here full yeah. of uh, cut-up questions, so they all come out randomly. Last time I had this many questions, I was helping the police with their inquiries. <laughs> right. <laughs> this one is from Lee Benjamin. Great. It's to you, Jamie. What was your schooling, and how did you take up the reins of the Jerry Anderson legacy? Oh. My schooling? Yes, have you got a school yeah. report on you? <laughs> no. Did you go? I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be sure. I did. I did go to school, and uh, yes, Just the did a lot. Thank you, Richard. Um, did a lot of arty things. Art and design, you know, was big on that. Although I, I think I, I got a B at A level art. Right. I sort of slightly, you know. Yeah. Lost focus a bit. Uh, uh, but I was, I was told I wasn't allowed to go into the family business and all that sort of stuff because Dad was being very protective. And then eventually, right towards the end of his life, he said. You know, what a shame you didn't join the family business. <laughs> yeah, great. Which is a, for, a forehead slapping moment. Uh, and then, yeah, mum and I so, just decided to give it a go. So when you were, where were you heading then when you were doing your A-levels? Where in your own mind were you, were you heading when you left school? Uh, well, I, I still wanted to go in via the kind of concept art route. I thought design, mm. production design, maybe then to direction or production, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I made sure I had a mix of science and art. So my, my A-levels were... Uh, art, music, history of art, and biology. Right. I remember getting some Christmas cards from from uh, the family where you had done the uh, cover on it. Do you oh, remember no, those? How embarrassing. Yeah, oh, yeah. Have you still got it, Terry? Hey, have you still got it? Oh, it must be at home somewhere. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, those sort of images should never be seen again. But uh, no, yeah, you're quite right. Actually, there, yeah. there must have been some. Oh dear, how embarrassing. Anyway, there you go. So yes, yeah, an, an arty education with a bit of science thrown in, which I think puts you in, in good stead for science fiction, one might hope. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Another question, Terry? Well, the other part of this question oh, yeah. is, how did you take up the reins of the Jerry Anderson legacy? Oh, uh, just by grabbing them and hoping for the best. <laughs> hoping you weren't going to fall off. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, it was just, Mum and I discussed it and said, you know, should we just wrap everything up and, and call it a day? And uh, yeah. I, I said I really didn't think that was a good idea and... We should do more, and I just started started giving it a go, Terry. Or me, okay. in fact, uh, from Macon, Georgia. 
Yeah. That's what <laughs> it is, isn't it? I remember. That's it. Macon in Georgia. That's right. Exactly. Right. Oh, here's an interesting one from Abby. Could you explain the Captain Scarlet regeneration? Where does his conscious go? And how is it determined how he regenerates? Do all the pieces slide back together? <laughs> now there's a thought. <clears throat> Yeah, is that, um, is that explored much in the in the program, Captain Scarlet? How he actually does get reassembled yeah, if he's blown of course, apart? Of course not. But I mean, it, it, the Mistron's way is to kind of br- bring matter back together to form a perfect replica. So I, I think even even if Scarlet is blown to smithereens, yeah, then that the the weird kind of metro, retro metabolism that he's stuck with means yeah. that he will just coalesce yeah. and the image of it all sort of sliding and slithering back together yeah maybe not well, they, they kind of showed it in uh, in new captain scarlet the kind of green uh, light rebuild right. stuff yes and of course i mean it's very torchwood isn't it i suppose that's obviously where it came from the whole captain jack in, in some of the torchwood episodes when he does get you know dismembered we, yeah. we do see him reassembling mm. wow. for a much more adult audience of course yeah well john mm. barrowman told me that captain jack absolutely was his opportunity to play captain scarlet uh, and he loved it so <laughs> there you go there you go another one terry wow. let's learn, have a couple more learn, and then we'll move on to uh, new every other day. things yeah that's right comes another one this is from oh Tom Hodden. Oh. Jamie, are there any directors or producers that Mr. Addison particularly admired for their creation? Are there any movies or TV shows he wished he had been given the script for or that he wished he could have tried his hand at? Ah. I know he was a big Bond fan, wasn't he? He would <clears> love <throat> to have done a Bond film. I know well, he he almost, almost did at least yeah. write a Bond. Um, yeah. Almost did Moonraker. Um I mean, he might, he certainly admired Spielberg. He admired Peter Jackson. Back in the day, of course, we were discussing last time that he got in a little bit of trouble with Stanley Kubrick over Space <clears> 1999. <throat> yes, and I, not, I don't know what the level of admiration yeah. was there, but Kubrick yeah, yeah. wasn't very happy. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, Jim Cameron is another mm-hmm. one <clears throat> that yeah. he admired. I think. I mean, any creative, we're magpies, aren't we? Producers, yeah. directors, actors, we're all magpies. We, we pick and choose, don't we? We take a little bit of this, yeah. a little bit of that from uh, various productions and directors we, we might admire. Yeah, although Dad was always very conscious not to be copying people. Yeah. He, in fact, he, he didn't like to go and watch content that was yeah. similar to his own in case yeah. he was subconsciously stealing from it. But it's interesting that Peter Jackson and Jim Cameron are both massively inspired by Dad. There so you go. the fact yes. that he was also then, you know, yeah. inspired by them is kind of cool. That's a pleasing um, symmetry, isn't it? Yeah, but I think he yeah. would have just—he would just would have loved to have, a, have a, had a go at a big epic. He always mentioned Ben Hur. That was his kind Oof. of thing he wanted to do a huge cinema epic um, yeah. and never got the chance yeah. yeah great one more terry one more come on dig deep dig deep <clears throat> here we go and this is from tom hodden again how many <laughs> did you send in tom? he sent two right. or three which is absolutely fine right. oh there you go did jamie ever go back to the little chef mentioned in that other podcast <laughs> <laughs> well, now, which are, is there another podcast? I don't know. I'm not sure. It doesn't mention what number podcast or which little chef. I think he's talking about the uh, um, the Benji and Nick show yes. is a podcast, and uh, it's uh, it's a little chef um, on the road out of Monmouthshire. Uh, and uh, no, I haven't been back yet, but I do intend to at some point, perhaps <laughs> to celebrate our anniversary uh, podcast in three podcast time. Yeah, wow. on the way back from uh, the Fab Wells of Anderson, I might try and go to that little chef. Fantastic, very good. Well, there's a start <laughs> on, our, on our fifty questions. Thank you very much for that, Terry. Right, uh, right. Now, uh, we, people have been getting in touch on Twitter as well. Just generally hashtagging us hashtag Jerry Anderson podcast. Uh, Air Denmark tweeted, "Is Jerry Anderson back in more than podcast? Wish he was." Well, oh. we know that Jerry Anderson will be back in more than just a podcast because we know, don't we, that brand new Jerry Anderson stuff is being made right now. So. We do know Keep your eyes peeled for that, yeah. Uh, Lord James Howe said, uh, nearly finished the latest podcast episode on Spotify of the Jerry Anderson podcast. The interview with Jamie's mother is fantastic. In three interesting parts, if you're a fan of Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, or any other Jerry Anderson puppet series, this is for you. Uh, And finally for now, uh, Radio Classica got in touch to say on Twitter, (laughs) Especial Guardianes del Espacio, Jerry Anderson, el alma de este proyecto y el legendario compositor Barry Gray son los protagonistas de este podcast dedicado a esta serie de culto Feliz viaje en el tiempo. Which was lovely, wasn't it? Oh, isn't that nice, though? Yeah, really yeah. nice. Which, of course, Fantastic. I mean, I know you know this, uh, translates to um, 
well at least Twitter translates to Special Space Guardians. Jerry Anderson, the soul of this project, and legendary composer Barry Gray are the protagonists of this podcast dedicated to this cult series. Happy journey in time. Which sounds like, a bit Stan Young with uh, the end, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly how I would have translated it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there we are. Nice. So we'll come back to a few, a few more tweets later on. Uh, in the meantime, of course, you can get in touch with us whenever you want at podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. We'll be reading out a few listeners' emails a little later on, and uh, we might read out yours, if you're lucky, this week. If you emailed week, in, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're very good at this, Richard. Well, I've done it a few yeah. times now, yeah. Terry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> yeah you too many <laughs> yeah. oh right well look it's my turn oh yes what's going to happen mind now? well i'd like yeah, to what? take over for a very special oh 50th fab facts not 50 yes. fab facts ah uh, but a 50th okay thing fab facts. great well hang on so uh but where are the where are the band then i don't know where the music's gone oh where they go where's the music jamie well, the band should be here on. now i'm I working on forward, it i was looking forward to meeting them yeah Especially a drummer. That's it, Lance. Right this way. In you come. There you go. Yep. Oh, through there. and there's Chris. Oh, Chris has uh, got it. Yes, it turns out the lads in the band here were accidentally all shipped out to Asteroid A5, which is a penal colony, better known as The Rock, which appeared in an episode of Space Precinct. I wonder how this happened. Anyway, I found their distress call. Marina and I flew in in our eagle. Oh, we had to put up one hell of a fight to get them out of there. Space battles, lasers flying everywhere. You should have seen it. But the important thing is they're here now and ready to play. Uh, thank you, Chris. There we are. That was good. I thought you'd be pleased. Right. Thanks, Chris. Makes sense. God, well, yeah. I'm glad he rescued them from the rock of all well, places. Well, I know. Yeah. For crimes against music, no doubt. <laughs> 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 don't, don't say that now they're here. Very rude. <laughs> now, actually, I thought, um, Jay, well, do you want to just uh, explain the, uh, the, the scenario behind your, your favourite part of the, of the pod? And then yes. I'll, I'll give you a little idea. OK, fine. Well, Fab Facts is uh, a very elaborate part of the podcast, which requires a huge amount of setup and, uh, you know, several months of design. It right takes this flicking segment. through a book. Yeah, all right, fine. So, yeah, well, I've got a book of fab facts. I flick through it. Uh, Richard shouts fab. I stop on a page. We read a fact. We chat about it. And that's it. Yeah. So, is that the, fab facts. Is that the best-selling book, best fab facts? It seems to be going very well at the moment, doesn't I, it? <laughs> I think it is the best-selling one. It's a shame that there's no current version, but I've seen, yeah, second-hand but yeah. copies of the book on Amazon uh, being valued in the hundreds of pounds yeah. now because of the demand okay. for them. <laughs> We've hit a bit of a Fab Facts bubble, haven't we, I think? We have. Uh, yeah, uh, no, but I thought, just to ring the changes, and as Terry's here, wouldn't it be nice if Terry were to call out Fab? Oh, yeah. And, would, you uh, not, and... would you mind doing that, Terry, Oh, for oh us? yes, yes, please. I'll do it in the car when I'm listening to the, <laughs> the pod anyway. So, yeah. Oh, well, now you get to do it for real. So. Oh, so it's quite an exciting moment. So here is, is the book of fab facts, listeners. Okay. Ooh, there it is. There it is. Right. Uh, so cool. Terry, oh, are ready. you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Here right, we here go. we go then. Fab. Oh, oh, oh. hang on. What happened there? But I'll Sorry. be rehear. I'll be rehearsing that. Chris Dale. Oh. Are you Chris Dale? <laughs> why, I to... why I would have got away with it if it wasn't for Chris Dale. Oh. <laughs> well, shall we? I mean, do you want to go with Chris's fab anyway? Come on then, yeah. what have you got? Okay. Uh, now, what... Actually, don't forget, Jamie, also to read out the page number because people do like to play along at home with their own copies. We've discovered. Yes, fine. Well, we've stopped on page 76 this week. Right. Uh, and I'm going to give you three fab facts from this page because it's our 50th it's a special occasion great and also to make up for the fact that uh, Terry didn't get to shout fab yeah yes. you're right Terry yeah I'm... you're over I'll get over it yeah. yeah it looks pretty sad but he does give him a tissue poor Terry uh, okay that's like a cake so <laughs> they get very absorbent for, <laughs> for tears uh, right so fact the, fa the fact the first yes <laughs> making a puppet dance is not easy cool uh, in the Thunderbirds episode, The Cham Cham, Lady Penelope was seen performing a slow foxtrot with one puppeteer controlling her strings from above and another holding onto her feet out of camera shot. Right. There you go. There's quite a lot of puppet dancing and yes. I ice skating because there's a lovely ice skating ah, sequence in Stingray. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, Do you think if it were that difficult, wouldn't you kind of not write sequences in which the puppets had to dance and ice skate? Yeah, but I can imagine Dad... Being like, no, we will we will not be restricted by the yeah. fact that these are marionettes. Yeah, right, right. in dancing, right in uh, yeah. free running. If it had existed in the nineteen sixties or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. a bit of parquet. So I think all those, 
whatever. With all those, with all those strings, the easiest stance would be the twist. Hey, oh, you see, this is why Terry's here. <laughs> this is why he's here for the 50th. Yeah, that's it, Terry. That's, it's like yeah. Christmas Fab Live all over again, isn't it? <laughs> and we swore we'd never do it again exactly. after that. Yeah. We did, yes. yeah. Yes, never yeah, mind. Yes. Oh, well, you should yeah, remember no. that better. Uh, would you like another fact? Yeah, go on then. I mean, you're getting one anyway, so. Great. Steve Zodiac. Oh, yeah. From 5XL5 mm-hmm. appeared in t- TV commercials for the Lion's Maid Zoom Ice Lolly. Well, he must have had a very good agent. Oh, I remember that. He had an excellent agent. Uh, while the series itself was filmed in black and white, the commercial were made in colour cool. for a cinema audience. Ah. So it was colour 5XL5. Yes. Wow. But that it must was have been just, something. You know, terrible adverts. Yeah. With Steve going, new Zoom! Yeah, uh, but, and that kind of thing. But they would have been amazing adverts, Jamie, because, uh, you know, it, on a cinema screen, in yeah. colour, yeah. that's explosive, I, isn't it? I can remember that advert. Can you? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah very much so. There you go. Terry's, otherwise... of course, much older than we are. Yeah. Of, of course, much, yes. Yeah. Much older. Yeah, my, <laughs> my birth certificate is written on papyrus. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Terry. No. I, He's not really. Uh, but they would have only otherwise they would have only seen Firelight like Surviving Colour in T V twenty one, I guess. Yes, in comic sure. form or maybe the occasional photo uh, of, of XL5 itself. But yeah, there that's you right. go. Yeah. Oh god, right, oh. Uh, Jamie, oh now that sound means that, that mean? I'm gonna give you um uh, just uh, four or five very quick um uh, quick fire questions. So are you ready for this, Jamie? Puppet or live action? Puppet. Uh, Orin or Romek? Orin. Uh, Space 1999, season one or season two? One. Barry Gray or Crispin Morell? Oh, Crispin. Favourite villain, Captain Black or The Hood? Black. There you go, well done. Woo. Well, that was really hard. I yes. <laughs> had a horrible it's surge fine. of adrenaline when you, <laughs> when you know, did that. Absolutely. Well, look out, there might be a few more of those a little later on. Yeah, I won't tell you what happened to me. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, the way he was sitting question. awkwardly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Phew. Goodness me, I, please don't do too many more of those. I, no, I'm, I'm trying to. I feel a bit to. sick now. Yeah. Um, would, you, would you like the last Come on, then. fad yeah. fact for today? Go on, then. One of the most complex puppet scenes to film was the journey Virgil Tracy took from the Tracy Lounge to his craft, Thunderbird 2, via right. the flip-flop wall and series of sliding shoots. Yeah. Right, now, obviously that makes sense, but, ha- I mean, c- can you imagine the, the level of complexity to actually do that? All the different cuts and changes of... Yeah, wiring to the stringing to the puppet and the, the sliding elements, and no wonder they only filmed it once. Well, that's yeah. right. Uh, yeah. And do you have any idea how much filming a sequence like that might have taken them? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I'm, I imagine they would have done that fairly, fairly early on. Yeah. Um, and it, so it would have been before they were completely up to speed with yes. you know, how how everything was working. Although they obviously they had to sting and stuff before. Yeah. Um, it would have been a slower process. I I reckon that. That sequence must have taken several days. Yeah, must absolutely. Have done. That's extraordinary. Yeah, we did a little tribute to that in Dick Spanner. I don't know if you remember when he was in the uh, jam factory. We had him mm. coming down all those sort of uh, pipes, <laughs> and that was like our little tribute <laughs> nice. to that. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 but that took a long time. Yeah, extraordinary. Yeah, but a lovely, a very cool sequence. Yeah. yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, they should have had a bit of a, an homage sequence in Space Precinct, shouldn't they? Where Orin slid down a chute and, you know, was deposited at his breakfast table with a bowl of cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> or a porridge cannon delivered uh, a bowl of porridge to you or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That oh, we're getting very uh, yeah. Aardman now. Aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we are a little bit. Very <laughs> Nick Park, yeah, that's right. Mm, anyway, uh, that very neatly brings us, well, actually not very neatly, very messily brings us to this, the end of this week's 50th Facts. Facts. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's just leave it like that. That'll yeah. do. <laughs> Bit of a mess. Blame Terry Adlam for the mess. Yeah, yeah. We always do. Uh, there you go. So, so sorry about Chris interrupting Terry. Yep. That's who I, I'll yeah. speak to him later. Yeah, indeed, yeah. So uh, just to remind you, you're listening to the Hashtag Jerry Anderson podcast. You can get in touch with us on Twitter or via our Facebook page um, where people have been posting things like this. So Josh Long, for example, this is rather nice. Josh Long posted over on our Facebook page. So uh, rather than my usual posting, here's something everyone can get involved with. When and where did Jerry Anderson come into your life? And what show launched you into the fandom of the Anderson universe? And they had lots of responses there to Josh's question. Nick Cox said it would have been in the 70s when I was is small and it had to be Space 1999. Abby said uh, in the early 90s watching Captain Scarlet, Stingray and Thunderbirds as a child with my dad. Rachel said early 80s my favourite two shows in the world were Terrorhawks and a non-Jerry Anderson show Starfleet. Uh, Gary said 
Well, that would be the original run of Thunderbirds for me. I liked Captain Scarlet, and I have my first Anderson toy, an MSV. It's a wreck these days, but I still have it. And Dave finally said, in the 60s, he was waking up before going to school or on a weekend and watching Thunderbirds, of course, on an old black and white telly. It sort of coincided, coincided nicely on the era with the first Apollo moon landing. Isn't that nice? So a great spectrum, as it were. Uh, uh, I do the joke. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's the bad one. That's lovely, isn't it? People watching throughout the 70s, yeah. 80s, 90s, into the 2000s. That's the broad breadth of the of the Jerry Anderson universe, isn't it? Right there. We're a like we're a very multi generational church. This one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very nice. So uh, do join the uh, Jerry Anderson Podcast Listens Group on Facebook. You'll have to answer three questions to get in. Do make sure you answer them. And then I personally will let you into the group. It's a nice, yep. fun place full of friendly people. Richard Gatekeeper James. That's what they call me. Well, that's one of the things they call yeah, me. You've been, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. a good one. To my face. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. 50 more yeah. questions? 50 There's more? 50 more, but maybe a few more. <clears throat> Some more question. of the 50. Yes. Okay. I think Come so. On, Terry, are you there with your bowl? I yeah. am. This is from James Pilson Wood. It's oh, yes. for you, Richard. Oh, yes. When filming Space Precinct, yes. Precinct, did you ever think you would be as involved in the future of Anderson Entertainment as you are now? Uh, I mean, if I'd known then what I know now, Terry, <laughs> I think I would have ripped off my orange mask and run for the hills. <laughs> oh. Uh, Richard. No, of course I didn't. I don't know. Did I? I don't really remember thinking like that. I mean... I say it was just a job. Of course, I was aware it's a bit of a special job and a very probably a quite a defining job, you mm. know, for, for my very young career. I was, I was only about twenty-five, I think, at the time. But I, I suppose I hoped it might have some sort of longevity. But I didn't think I'd ever be doing stuff like this. In fact, my son said to me the other day, he said the irony is because, of course, in space precinct, I was never heard because I was dubbed yeah. by another actor, and of course, I was never seen because <laughs> I was under six inches of prosthetic makeup. <laughs> and now I'm one of the faces and voices of the Jerry Anderson Amazing. universe. How did that Amazing. happen? Hey, when it happened, finally, it yeah, of course. yeah, bless your your uppance has come. <laughs> exactly. But I, was, right. I was actually telling Richard this morning that I was actually in Space Police. Yeah, the pilot. Did you know ah. that? There's a scene I think where they're chasing Mr. Big's car and it crashes. And if you look in the bottom right hand corner, there's an alien mugging another alien, and that was me and uh, Mark Woolard. Who was mugging who? I can't remember. Oh. Mark, Mark, Mark mugging me, no, Mark. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, <laughs> it's going to be that way around. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So I, I was in the pilot. There you go. Uncle. There you go. Great. Yeah. Another question? And that's, that's another fab fact. <laughs> it is fact. <laughs> You're yeah. right. It's coming thick and fast today. Okay. Phil Steer wants to know who or what would be your choice of cosplay from the Jerry Anderson universe? Not necessarily your favourite actor or vehicle or whatever. Okay. Favourite cosplay? cosplay? Jamie. I don't know. Lady um, Penelope. Okay, moving on. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if I, if I was feeling particularly brave, I could go for a bit of a skydiver string vest. Oh, <laughs> right. Potentially. Mm. Mm. Probably, probably not, though. Yeah. I'm not um, sure I'd accompany you on that one, Jamie. R- you might be on your own there. Bit, <laughs> bit rude. Bit rude. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um, but no, otherwise, I think I quite like new Captain Scarlet costumes. They're kind of, Ooh. they're pretty cool. Okay. And also take something, something from a CG universe and bring it into the, into reality would be fun. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd go as your, as your classic Captain Black. Yeah. Or I'd go as the Zwellin from Space Precinct. The great nice. hairy ape creature. And, <laughs> and, and as, I, as I've got all the stuff in my wardrobe, I'd go as Youngstar. <laughs> um, <laughs> great let's have another question <laughs> very good Terry goes as the sort of uh, the gurgling dribbling tramp basically <laughs> yeah yeah. very good yeah normal night out really right <laughs> we, uh, moving on Roman why is the rank of commander higher than captain in WASP yet in the navy the reverse well right wow shall we move on another, <laughs> another question uh, I think that's one of the many things they just try. They just flip stuff around to be different from the real yeah. world, and just to yeah. give it a little twist of difference to make you ask this very question all these there years. There you go. Later. That's right. Okay. Duncan Wilson. I know Duncan. Jamie, I'm impressed how you find time to run a farm, do podcasts, get Firestorm off the ground, and look after your father's legacy. How do you do it? Also, what is your favourite interview lunch menu? Yeah, right, yeah. Lunch we get, we get menu. A cup of coffee, yeah, we? we had coffee. 
I, what, right. so, so Richard only bought you coffee. Terry. Yeah, that, that's very much down to Richard's decision. He could easily have got you a sandwich or something more interesting. I think there. Terry might even have paid for it. I got. Don't know, got yeah, last so, I had that coupon. Yeah. So yeah. how how do you find the time, Jamie, in amongst all your other lives? What a lovely question. Uh, you Duncan, get up very early. Yeah. The, the tenors in the post. Uh, <laughs> well, I just I just really like working. That's it, really. I'm a bit mm. like Dad in that respect. Mm. Um, I, I just, do you find it difficult to relax and unwind if you have a weekend away or a holiday or a break? I, d- I don't really have holidays no. or weekends away, so that's... <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, if I have a few days off, I get a bit tetchy and I want to be doing stuff. And if I also if I have any time off, I end up thinking of something new that I want to do and I then yeah. want to jump on it straight away. So I just... Yeah. I just you know, like doing yeah. stuff. And that's yeah. all really. And what, uh, what was your favourite interview lunch? Do, do you actually sleep? Ah. Sometimes, Terry, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Upside it's down, amazing. hanging to the rafters. Yeah, uh, a, fa- a favourite interview lunch. Was that was that the, the, the food or the or the interviewee? Was oh, it let's the, go the lunch menu. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had, I had a, if you go all the way back to the very beginning, actually I had a really nice brunch. And that's mm. not quite the question with Sophia Miles. Oh, right. Yeah, lovely. And she she packed it away, let me tell you. <laughs> did she? She really did. Well. I mean, she, she, she got an extra egg and an extra thing of hollandaise for her uh, plate of um, eggs benedict or whatever it was. Right. I mean, yeah, she, well. yeah. Typical nice. actually, you see. We never know where we're going to be eating next. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice being good company yeah. where we both pigged out. So yeah. there you go. Lovely. Okay, here's another question from Russell Morris. This is another really good one. You should really have sort of like a Jerry Anderson quiz night because these are okay. some fantastic questions. Yeah, great. Hi, guys. Love the podcast. Mm. Please can you advise why colours of spectrum agents do not sync with colours of the spectrum? Well... Technically, obviously they do because the spectrum itself in it physics contains yes. all the colours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but specifically, that I think in Captain's Guard Canon there are fifty or sixty spectrum agents. So obviously they're not going to sync with the limited number of colours on the spectrum roundel, which is what I assume you're referring to. Hmm. So the, we're following the adventures of a select group. Uh, who don't specifically match up with the Spectrum logo because there are more agents than there are colours on the Spectrum logo. I hope that answers the question succinctly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no! I can't even get ready to get ready to Right, so, so quick fire questions. <laughs> right, Jamie, are you ready for this? Uh, so, um, uh, Cloud Base or Tracy Island? Cloud Base. Themes, Stingray or Captain Scarlet? Uh, it depends. On the end, uh, end Scarlet. Yep. Uh, Brogan or Haldane? Brogan. Uh, Multicom or Comlock? Comlock. Commander Straker or Colonel Freeman? Straker. <sighs> right, there we go. Phew! Yeah. I mean, there we are. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for those. <laughs> again, quite... They thick and fast, don't they? Quite tense, yeah. But, yeah. but so that, the, the Scarlet or Stingray one, that that definitely needed more specific because opening Stingray, closing yeah. Stingray, okay. opening yeah. Scarlet, well, closing Scarlet. Yeah. Yeah, true. I've no idea who set those questions, so, you know, just, well, they, you know. Yeah, they need to slap on the wrist. Right. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> All right, it was me. Oh. Yes. Well, right. uh, thanks anyway, Richard. Do, do better next time. You're welcome. Uh, so is that, does that interruption bring us to the end of this section of questions? I think it might well do for now, yes. Yeah, yes uh, I think so. Plenty more to come a little later on. Just a reminder to everyone at home, you're listening to the Jerry Anderson Podcast and we'll be for the next hour or so. Uh, we've got Chris Dale's Amazing Randomizer coming up. We've got some newsy news 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 oh, coming up yes, in a little yes, while. Yes. Terry Adlam is joining us uh, for our 50th anniversary podcast special. Hi, everyone. And uh, don't forget, you can get in touch at podca- podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. Easy. And you've been saying it for 49 episodes previously, <laughs> no, Richard. I over it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, I mean, you said newsy, news, news, news coming up yeah. in a little while. I mean, should we just do it now? Let's get do to, it now. Let's get it out of the way. All right, here is the Jerry Anderson News. <laughs> this is the exciting bit, Terry. Sorry? This I said this is exciting. Oh, right. Yeah, so look excited. I'm looking excited. Sound excited. Hey. Right. That's the best we're going to get, I think. Thanks for enthusiasm there. <clears throat> Hopefully listeners will feel more enthusiastic when they hear this Jerry Anderson news. Yeah. Uh, Richard, last week we spoke about the Lego Thunderbird 2. Yes. And that we asked for listeners' support for that mm-hmm. project on the Lego Ideas website. I think when we started talking about it, it was something like 8,800 votes, maybe. Yeah. And it needs 10,000 to go forward with the Lego team. Yeah. Well, 
at the time of recording, it's now up to 9,800 votes. Wow. Just 200 more votes required to get this thing across the line. Wow. So if you, if you have yet to vote, well, what are you waiting yeah. for? Are you trying to take all the glory to get it across the line? Go and vote now. <laughs> uh, if you want to find out more about it, go to the Jerry Anderson website, jerryanderson.co.uk, and just uh, it should be on the front page. If not, just search Lego in the search box and um, yeah, click the link and go find. and vote. Yeah. Is, oh, is, is, uh, there, is there a uh, deadline for it or...? Uh... Uh, a deadline's like two months' time, but oh, don't fine. wait because yeah, if it yeah, goes absolutely. past the deadline, then that's it. None of the yeah. votes will count for anything. Yeah, so, sorry to interrupt there. I've just got a bit of news. Oh. Um, uh, a lorry carrying Lego has just overturned on the M4, right. um, but it, it's okay. The emergency services has, have been asked to assemble quickly. Right. Um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah, yes, oh, please. Old Terry Adlam. Let, let's move on, please. That, that's why we ship him in, and also why we ship him out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get me coat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was an event last weekend, Richard, or the weekend mm. just gone prior to release. Mm. Jerry Anson on film at the South End on Sea Film Festival. Ooh. Where they were showing stuff from original 16 mil prints. Uh, Terror yeah. Hawks, Captain Scarlet, uh, Supercar, Thunderbirds, I think. Maybe one other, I can't remember. Uh, did you go? Did you yeah. did you go and watch it? Did you pop along to the South on South End on Sea Film Festival? Let us know. We'd love to know how how the experience was watching uh, watching these things on on sixty mil film. Yeah, great. God, that must have been amazing. Yeah, was well, nice. People who've got collections of these things who like to display yeah. them, which is really really nice because so many bits and pieces end up in private collections and yeah. are never seen again. Yeah, so. that's right. There you go. Uh, should we slip into some merchy merch merch oh. merch newsy news news news? Love Ooh. a bit of merchy merch yes. merch yes. merch yes. news 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 news. Don't be sorry. Yes. Who doesn't love that? Oh. Uh, now, specifically for our Podsterons. Oh, yes. Have you seen these, Richard? Oh, lovely. Yeah, they're great. We've got Podsteron tees uh, and mugs. Yes. Excellent. Uh, so they say, this is the voice of the Podsterons on it, mm-hmm. in a sort of um, Mr. Ron's font. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, we think you should all wear them if you're going to come along to the Fab Worlds of Anderson. Yeah. Um, if you would like a 20% discount exclusively <gasps> for the Podsterons in the Podsterons Facebook group, Cool. Then there is an announcement post right there. Yeah. But if you haven't joined the group, then surely this is an yeah. enticement to join. Wow. So pop along to facebook.com slash group slash podsterons. Yeah. And uh, yeah, grab the discount code there. But we won't Fantastic. be giving it to anybody who isn't in that group. Will no, we, Richard. No, absolutely not, Jamie. No, no, it's between you, me, and about 400 other people and who the join the group. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. Now, are we going to be uh, making an appearance? Will they be making an appearance in Leicester, the T-shirts and mugs and so on? Will we be... Selling them off. And- we selling them off. We we <laughs> might take a few along, but I, I would encourage people if they're going to come along, to try and order it in good time. They're, yeah. They'll they'll you know depending on where you are, they should be able to get them to you in time before the event. So yeah. um, grab yeah. them. But we will take a few along yeah, just okay. in case. Okay. Right. Good. Uh, some other teas. Oh yeah. You know the nice Firewall XL5 schematic we put out a few weeks ago? Yes. It's gone down extremely oh, right. well. Gorgeous. It's, it's really lovely. Well, there's now a Stingray and Captain Scarlet SPV version for you to nice. enjoy as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. So pop okay. along to the, the Jerry Anderson store, shop.jerryanderson.co.uk. Just type in schematic. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nice, easy one to spell there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that'll pop up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, two Ks. Uh, uh, so <laughs> they're nice T-shirts, though, aren't they? Lovely, so, uh, all good. And uh, now, Richard, would you like to take over the last bit for a reminder of the Fab Worlds of Anderson and what the hell's yes. going on there? Absolutely. So I can't we, remember. Yeah, of course, of course. You can. Uh, I hope, as many of you, dear listeners, can join us as possible at the Fab Worlds of Anderson, which is at the Space Centre in Leicester on the fifteenth and sixteenth of June. That's Saturday and Sunday. Because well, Jamie's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Chris Dale is going to be there. We'll have our own little table. I'll be bringing uh, along a few props. I've got my orange uh, shirt and multicom and my gun and. Might bring a few copies of the book and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, just to put under the table leg to yeah, keep the table level, it. obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, and the big news is, I suppose, that at some point on the Saturday afternoon, the timetable's yet to be released, but we will be doing the podcast live on stage wow. in front of a lovely audience. <laughs> Of at least uh, three. Of at least three. Now, I suspect there'll be a few more than that because, uh, yeah. as we know, on our Facebook listeners group, people are rallying to the cause and making plans and booking hotels and uh, uh, planning to meet up at the uh, at the event. So that, I think there'll be quite a few there, which would be rather yeah. lovely. Someone coming from Australia. Uh, Dave is coming from Australia. Wow. I know. Isn't that extraordinary? That uh, is and then on the Sunday, and this, the very idea of this is filling Jamie with horror, I we're going it. to be uh, broadcasting Fab Live live from the Space Centre at some point in the afternoon, again in front of a live audience, aren't we, Jamie? 
Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 tough enough when it's just you and me in a room trying to make yes, it work. But I know the, the idea of having a live audience there and being somewhere else with an unpredictable broadband connection. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Phew, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm filled with dread and tension. Yeah. Well, well, Jamie, if you're doing it at the Space Centre, it should go well if you plan it. There, you see? He's but, um, sat on that braid. Oh, 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 Terry. I mean, I can only imagine the hours of craftsmanship that have gone into these ahead of time, so thank you for, for preparing them. <laughs> and we, would lo- we would love to see you all there for Podcast Live and Fab Live Live. Yeah. Um, and uh, when you do come along, we're going to have some uh, some Jerry Anson podcast postcards. Mm-hmm. If you've got a question you would like to ask us for the Voice of the Podster on section, do come along to our table, write down your question, yeah. and then uh, let us know if you want to ask it live during the show or not. If yeah. you don't want to, that's fine. We'll just read out your question. There's no problem. You know, some people don't want to... Uh, yeah. speak up and do that sort of stuff uh, in front of other people that's absolutely fine uh, and then we'll pick those podster on uh, questions just ahead of time so uh, yeah that's the way to get them in and we won't be doing email ones that week will we Richard unless yeah, there's sure. a specific yeah. interesting one that feels appropriate that's right yeah 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 so we'll it's be taking all, questions it's all about live. new podster ones who get absolutely. their live yeah. yeah yeah that'll be exciting won't it <laughs> won't it Jamie <laughs> exciting or terrifying or I mean yeah so basically if, if you like disaster movies um, come along and watch one <laughs> unfold live yeah, uh, exactly. with uh, with me Richard and Chris <laughs> great there we are excellent and uh, oh I, I suppose that actually brings us sort of neatly uh, to the end of this week's Jerry Anderson news Terry <sighs> would you like to join me oh I've been rehearsing after three okay one two three that, that was, was the news Beautiful, wasn't it? I mean, should we just ship ship Terry in every week for that? Yeah. Well, you say that. (laughs) (laughs) I'll just I'll just copy and paste that bit into exactly. Yeah, Yeah. we'll say he's happy with my agent. (laughs) Let's have some more uh, fifty questions, uh, Terry, or or, or, uh, hashtag fifty questions. People have been sending these in via email or on Twitter over the past couple of weeks. These are questions to me, Jamie, and for Terry. So, what have we got here? Okay, Sol Pinto was. Ms. V, mm-hmm. I do apologise for pronouncing that wrong. Mm-hmm. Richard, mm-hmm. what is your very, mm-hmm. very, mm-hmm. very, three varies, yes. first Jerry Anderson experience and of his work? My first Jerry Anderson experience? Well, well, the one I remember watching growing up was Space 1999. And I remember, this is an age old story that I've yeah. mentioned a few times, my sister vomiting on my, uh, my Space 1999 Eagle toy. Right, I've in the back heard, of the yep. car, and yeah. I went to Wales, I think it was, on holiday. <laughs> it was in a bucket. It was one of those sandcastle buckets. I put it in there, and of course, she was feeling a bit ill because we we're going round and round about. And, it, you know. and my mum said, Well, do, just do it in the bucket. So she vomited in the bucket and over my toy. Oh, nice. So that's my kind of earliest experience with, with Jerry Anson. And to be honest, it's been downhill from then on. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag rude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> very rude. So, yeah. it, hang on, so you had an eagle toy, but you yeah. didn't know the show? Uh, I, I must have been aware of the show, mustn't I? No, no, I, I used to watch the show. I do remember watching the show. Yeah. yeah. So is that your first Jerry Anderson experience, really? Yeah. Is watching Space 1999, it's, that predates the eagle vomit incident? Yeah, I see what you mean. Yes, it must do, mustn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it, that's There's right. no specific thing of, sit, you know, you, th- you remember sitting down for the first time and being no, I don't. in front of a, no, a Jerry Anderson show. I don't, no. I just remember it being part of my kind of uh, my viewing experience. Yeah. And what about, about the what about seven. puppet shows? Did you? I, no, I. You see, I, I never watched the puppet shows. I don't think I must. You know, I was aware of them. Yeah, I know. I never saw them. I think it's because and we've mentioned this before because we were a BBC household. Uh, oh. You know, in those days, you were either BBC or ITV, weren't yeah. you? You were Swap yeah. Shop or or um, Tiswas, you know. Yeah. And and I think you know because the majority of the dance stuff was on was on ITV. I, we never got to saw it. Yeah, and that which makes you a, a Hoovian. Absolutely around, right, and a, and a Blake Seven fan, and all that, and tripods, and yeah, that was that was yeah. my my sort of stuff. There you go. What about you, Terry? Well, I I was very lucky to sort of like live within a stone's throw of uh, Sterling uh, Avenue, um, so I knew from an early age. My dad, was, who worked on the trade estate, was always telling me, you know, this is where they make uh, Thunderbirds. So I was always very curious about that, and so when I think Thunderbirds was. When it come on, it was always oh that's just made down the road, mm. um, and I always used to be hanging around there. In fact, that was one of Jerry's uh, first introductions to me. You know, I, I introduced myself. I was on Terror Hawks, and he said, "Where'd you come from?" And I said, "Well, I come from Slough, the Britwell Estate, near the Trading Estate." And he said, "Oh, he 
said, you weren't one of the naughty, naughty words uh, who used to come and nick all the stuff out the bins. Wasn't me, Governor, <laughs> honest. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but at school and everything, you know, Thunderbirds was, because it was so local, it was like almost like our programme. Um, so that's where I really got into it. Mm. And uh, as it as it went on, you know, always always there in the background for me. Mm. Yeah. So you both had quite tangible early Jerry Anderson experiences. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Jerry pulling things out of bins, Richard yeah. pulling an eagle out of some vomit. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. yeah. More questions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, one from Jeff Owen. Jamie, when did you find out that your father was the man he was and how important he was to the fans of his show? Hmm. It's quite a gradual process and one of appreciation of... Uh, what it actually means to be a producer. Um, so uh, early on, and I've said this many times before, we had VHS tapes of Thunderbirds and Terrorhawks yeah. and other stuff, which I used to watch. And then at one point, mum said to me, you know, your dad made those, which mm. to me meant he recorded them off the telly, and <laughs> put them in the boxes and made the covers for them or something. I didn't understand. You, you just don't, as a kid, appreciate yeah. the scale of a production. Uh, fast forward to... Uh, the early 90s with the reboot, or not the reboot, the re-showing of uh, Thunderbirds on the BBC, and suddenly it all started to become clear what what it actually meant, what he'd done. And, you know, not only were my friends at school watching Thunderbirds and they loved it, but their parents already knew about it. And it, we've discussed this before, you know, a lot mm. of people, when they see Thunderbirds for the first time, they assume it's made for them, mm -hmm. certainly in that decade. Um and, and I suddenly realised that this thing had been re-shown and my friend's parents, when they were kids, they'd watched it and they loved it and they were asking yeah. me to take, you know, old TB21 annuals home to get signed by Dad. Yeah. But, you know, it, it took even even longer than that to really appreciate the scale of it, the international scale, the multi-generational thing. And, uh, um, and even now, I think, I'm still finding people who have been influenced by, mm. by Dad's work and, mm. uh, and seeing the, the massive global wide scale uh, influence yeah. so still learning even now that's right yeah. amazing yeah. It's, it's almost a, a follow on question from this from James Pilson Wood um, Jamie I've not lost a parent but do you find it harder missing your father being this associated with his work is it hard to hear interviews see footage hmm. it's interesting because <clears throat> obviously uh, it's around me every day every single day so and yeah. I you know I I look to my left and there's a Thunderbird 2 on a launch ramp uh, and I look to my right and there's his Fab 1 that was in his office yeah. and obviously you know the company is inextricably, inextricably linked with it we do a podcast with his name on it a, a, yeah. the, the shop with his name on it um, so that, that that isn't painful in any way Yeah. Uh, and also I count myself as extremely lucky because a lot of people who lose a parent once they're gone there's very little left of them around, mm. which is terribly sad. And, you know, a lot of people will not have any video of their parents. They won't have any audio of them. Mm. Um, you know, they might have photos and photo albums, but they're things you've seen before. I'm, I'm very lucky that I'm regularly receiving new bits and pieces I've never seen before. You know, I get new photos. I hear new stories from people who work with him. Um, I, I, there's always something new. Mm. Um, and it's always people saying, saying nice things, too. Yeah, you know, so it it's weirdly uh, comforting and yeah. rarely uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, so no, I, and and so weirdly as well, I think I can somehow differentiate, you know, Dad the producer from Dad, uh, you know, the slightly embarrassing Dad joke telling parent. <laughs> <laughs> so and to to kind of live most of life on on the side of that proud bit is is actually quite quite nice yeah he, he was also you know incredibly proud of you because i i remember when i used to go around there and do some uh sort of work with him and i think you were you were very very young but he was amazed how you as you were growing up you recognized i think it was thomas the tank engine videos you would just buy the images and you would go up and pick them out and he was just fascinated that how images can sort of get get into people's mind at such an early age Aww. and i know he was always saying you know jamie can 
he knows where his Thomas the Tank Engine videos is. He, and he was incredibly proud that you could go there and start picking stuff out and choosing. Aww. Always remember that story. Dear old Jamie, uh, sometimes I think yeah. he understands nice. every word we say, Terry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I was going to say, done. and I was only 21 when he was saying <laughs> that. Well, that's what, you know, I wasn't going to say that. One more go. question and we'll move on. <laughs> okay, this is from Becca. Probably a silly question, not at all. But after super marination, ultra marination, and hyper marination (CGI rod puppets), what could the next format be? Oh, what's next? Mm. I mean, do, do you need to go further than ultra marination, <laughs> really? Hyper, hyper marination was the last one. Hyper, hyper, yeah. hyper was new Captain Scarlet. Firestorm yeah. was ultra. Yeah. I mean, G- yeah. Giga, Mega, t- Meg- ter- Terra. Yeah. Yeah. Terra Marionation. Yeah. Uh, Peter, Peter Marionation. P E T A. Is that the, that's the next one after, isn't it? Who knows? Yes. Oh, oh right, here, no. here we go again. Right, it's time for some quick fire uh, Jamie questions. Sorry, here we go. Uh, right, uh, Bergman or Koenig? Bergman. Uh, Helena Russell or Jane Castle? Mm, Jane Castle. Gotta be quick on that. Slow Mo or Robert the Robot? Slow Mo. Thunderbird 1 or Thunderbird 2? Two? 2. The Mole or Thunderbird 4? Mole. Captain Scarlet, new or classic? Oh, new. Oh, new. <laughs> ah, well done. Yeah. Woo! There you go. Good at that. Yeah, it brings you out in a bit of sweat, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. it I've really never seen does. I'm so scared. I might have to go for a pee, actually. It's still making me a bit tense. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I mean, this is all going terribly well, isn't it? Yeah, well, isn't uh, it? So, uh, should we look at bringing an end to that? <laughs> yeah. But with the. Uh, oh. What is that Ooh. chill? Oh. Have we opened the door well, suddenly? What's... Yeah. Oh, oh, it's here as well. Ooh. Ooh. Is it? Come on, my back. Oh. Oh. Stop it. Oh, oh it's quite nice. This is the voice of the Podsterons. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Ooh, hey! Terry's been tickled oh. by a Podsteron. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the first time. Uh, <laughs> There we are. Yeah, it's time for the voice of the Podsterons. It's time for listeners' emails because people have been sending in their emails by the drove uh, over the last week or so to podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. Haven't they, Jamie? They they have. I'm just looking ahead to one and realised that I hadn't properly researched it and I just need to look something up. (laughs) Right, Okay. Shall I skip forward to mine? Yeah, why do you do that? Yeah, so we've got one here from John Howie. John says, Jamie, Richard, uh, slash Richard and Jamie. I'm going to include Terry in this as well. Plus Terry, um, yeah. Hugh- I would, yeah. Uh, huge fan of the podcast, and like so many, I really enjoyed the interviews with Mary. Fantastic to hear how she maintained her strength and resolve during the difficult early times of the relationship. Very, very inspiring. I treasure my Captain Scarlet and Joe 90, sorry, Jamie, Blu-ray limited edition box sets with the comics and fantastic supplements and I'm wondering if there are plans for similar sets on my two other favourites, Stingray and Fireball XL5. I'm really hoping so. Keep up the fab work and thanks for keeping the magical Jerry Anderson worlds alive. All the best, John Howie. Oh, so, lovely. any plans for further limited edition box sets? Stingray and Fireball XL5 is hoping for, Jamie. Well, it's not up to me. Ah, uh, if you listen back to the network distributing edition of the Jerry Anson podcast, which I think yeah. it's Pod 10. All right. Uh, with Tim Beddows. He says that the next intended project mm. after Joe 90 is Stingray. Aha. Uh-huh. There's, no, there's no timeline given with that. Yeah. But, you know, I would think we could expect it in the next couple of years for sure. Yeah. Fireball XL5. I can see there's less value for them in doing a, a Blu-ray restoration of a black and white show. Sure. So I wouldn't say yeah. never say never. Yeah. But I think that and Supercar and certainly uh, Four for the Fools are less likely to see that kind of treatment. Yeah. But who okay. knows? Yeah. Yeah, and no, I think uh, Stingray is definitely up there, but it, it won't be immediate. Yeah. Great. There you go. Hope that yeah. helps. Yeah, very good. I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, the interview with Mary Anderson there, John, as well. Lots of people yeah. were yeah, posting on Twitter good. about that. What was so interesting about it, of course, we don't normally hear such a personal uh, interview. Mm. And uh, what a lot of people have found interesting and uh, surprising is is the low points. And we talked about this last time, the low points mm. in your dad's career. Because, of course, every career yeah. is going to have them. Yeah. Uh, even I have had the odd low point. I'm going through one now. Really <laughs> now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Predictable, Richard. Predictable. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> you all knew I was going to go there. Yeah. 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 Right, nice. Have you done your research? Can you answer the question now, Jim? Well, then what I've done is edited out the question that... Uh, ah. That uh, I... No, I, I, it's fine. I've done my research. We're all good. Okay. Yeah. Go on, then. Uh, so here we go. This is from Steve. Mm-hmm. 
Hi, amigos. Ah, oh, gracias. New intro. Yeah, isn't that weirdly appropriate for your yeah. uh, tweet you read earlier That's on? That's right, yeah. Uh, guess these are too late for Podcast 50, but uh, uh, only just thought of them. Well, no. That's uh, all right. As luck would have it. Yeah. I wrote the script even later than you emailed in, so yeah. you're fine. Um, thought you might like some fun questions to answer, so here's three. So it's my turn now Uh-oh. to chuck the questions at you two. Okay. If you had to have a Jerry Anderson-themed tattoo, right. what would you have and where would you have it? Ooh. Crikey. I was going to say Dick Spanner, but no. Uh-huh. Um uh, is that where you'd have it? Or is that, no, <laughs> exactly. No. Way! Keep it clean, please, gents. This is a clean podcast. Oh, interesting. That's a good one. Yeah. I think I'd probably have Jamie Anderson's eye tattooed at the end of my finger so I could see around corners. Oh. <laughs> is that Jerry Anderson themed? <laughs> Not really, is it? Handy for looking up old friends. Um, uh, <laughs> a tattoo. I don't know. I've yeah. got any tattoos. I think I would like a nice little, maybe a maybe a, a, a Captain Scarlet uh, on my on my chest. I think. Oh really? Yeah. Just to show off on the beach. Nice. I think I'd make lots of friends and influence people that way. While you're flexing on the beach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like well, looking, a, up, looking at my stomach at the moment, maybe some number two there. Yeah. The <laughs> Tracy Island, by the look of it. <laughs> oh, ouch. It's getting very sassy over there. Uh, very good. Well, I, I think uh, I would like the Terror Hawks emblem yes. uh, on, the, on the shoulder, just on, on nice. top of Nice. Yes, nice. That would be, okay. That's a bit, it's a bit naff in placement, but, you know, right. that, that, you know the nice Terror Hawks yeah. tee as designed by Peter Holmes. Right, yeah. in, okay. Uh, Pod 49. Well, maybe we'll uh, we'll get a tattooist along to the Fab Worlds and we can surprise you live. No, 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 thanks very much. Let's not do that. Anyway, moving on to number two. Thanks for that, Steve. Uh, Imagine you're a Super Marionation hero. Right. So let's play Snog Marry Avoid. Oh, right. Okay. Your choices are Ida Harris, Sistar and Mar Jones. No, only kidding. Oh. Oh. Your choices are, in fact, Lady Penelope, Symphony Angel, and Marina, Ooh. Snog Marry Avoid. Now I'm snog not getting into this one avoid. because I feel like it would be inappropriate. Okay, I think I would snog Marina because there's something rather alluring about her. Really? Okay. I would marry Lady Penelope for the money. Ah. Oh, for uh, the money, Richard. <laughs> True colours now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Angel would be my avoid. You'd avoid Symphony. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Terry? I would uh, snog. Symphony Angel. Okay. Avoid Lady Penelope. Yes, I'd be that. Marry Marina. Ah. Because you won't be able to tell me what to do. <laughs> and ask me where I've been when I come home late. Sorted. Well, you say that. I mean, she does a great job nagging Chris Dale every week. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. Nothing yeah. gets past her, let no. me tell you that. There you go. Uh, uh, and finally, from uh, Steve's selection, what Jerry Anderson related song would you sing at the Swinging Star karaoke night? Ah. Uh. I mean, you're quite limited in your choices here, I think. Well, I'm not. <laughs> What would that you was sing? the news. That was the news. <laughs> and everyone would join in. Yeah, and it would be mercifully short for the audience too. <laughs> exactly. So. Which uh, one was the Which one was the cliff one? Oh, um, uh, 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 shooting that? star. Shit, yeah. Shooting. Was it called a shooting star? You'd go. You'd go a bit cliff, would you? Yeah. Go a bit nice. Cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember enough. what that was called. Yeah, that'd be a good well, one. It, Great. It was called shooting star, wasn't it? Well, I think it was. Uh, if, I, I I would go for uh, the good old uh, end theme from um, Fire Black Cell 5. Ah, of course oh, you would. Yeah. I wish I was a spaceman. Is that that Fastest one? guy alive. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, this wish is all grist to the mill, space, isn't it, for man. our appearance at the uh, Fab Worlds of Anderson karaoke night. That's going to happen now, isn't it? Get get the piano in our play yeah. as well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Anyway, Steve finished off. Hope these are okay. Thanks for the great podcast every Monday and for mentioning my top tens. Regards from Steve. Lovely. Okay. I've I've got one here. It says, hello, Jamie, Richard, Chris, and my fellow posturons. It's from Josh Long. Um, What began in the prequel of the Jerry Anderson podcast has exploded into something wonderfully huge, thrilling, and FAB. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jamie, Richard, Chris, and to the many interviewees that have featured in the podcast. 
Wow. Mm. For me, the podcast has brought a lot of people together, whether they are fans of Jerry's work or had a career inspired by Jerry or maybe just wanted to be like Scott Tracy, being the pilot of Thunderbird 1 or being indestructible like Captain Scarlet. I know I did. Some days I still do. Don't we all? My Monday mornings now consist of anticipation, waiting to hear the banter between Jamie and Richard, newsy, newsy, news, the interviews ranging from the great David Graham to the lovely Wayne Forrester and the legend behind Zelda, Denise Breyer. I cannot forget Chris Stow's randomizer. It is always a pleasure to hear from Chris with his opinions and verdict of various episodes from series throughout the Anderson universe. One of my great regrets is that I cannot be there to meet all of you. I would love to have my photo taken with Jamie, Richard and Chris while asking kindly and politely for all three of your autographs. It would mean so much. I appreciate being a podstron and being able to interact with people from all over the place about something and someone who made my childhood the best it could ever be. It is starting to feel like a community, a community of podstrons. All that remains for me to say is thank you to the big man. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, too, to my fellow podstrons. I can't say podstrons. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) But a huge thank you to Jamie for keeping his dad's legacy alive, making him proud, and continuing on with the glorious firestorm and many more shows to come. As Richard says, There's there's new Jerry Anderson stuff stuff being made right now. That was from Josh. Very good. Thanks, Josh. Isn't Isn't that that nice? Podstron. Podstron. Podstron's Terry. That's right, exactly. And my favourite part of that is Josh says, it's starting to feel like a community. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're getting there. It's only taken a year. (laughs) I think a year to get a community going is not too bad, actually. (laughs) Absolutely. But yeah, Um, isn't that lovely? Well, yeah, I I get the feeling that those sentiments are shared across the the Podstron's community and also by us, Richard. We love love the fact that it's kind of... Of course. Positivity is coalesced around what we're oh, doing, so thank absolutely. you all for listening in. Yeah, a lot of people have it. Uh, oh, no, well, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Okay, we've got seriously? more questions for you here, Jamie. Sorry about that. Uh, right, here we go. So, uh, Destiny or Symphony? Destiny. Moonbase Alpha or Precinct 88 Station House? Ooh, uh, Alpha. Twizzy or Torchy? Twizzle. <laughs> Stingray or Fireball XL5? Stingray. Win or Wasp? Wasp. Zero, zero, zero it's or Cubes? Zeroids. Oh, right, that'll do, because I'm getting my tongue in a twist. I was going to say, nobody Ooh. will know what you're asking then, but hopefully they'll know <laughs> from the answers. Uh, very nice. Now, I've got, go. I've got one more uh, email, last one for now. Oh, go on then. Uh, and it's got a question for you in it, Richard. Oh, right, yeah. So, have you, have you got an unexpected visitor? Oh, it's only my wife. Carry on. Does she want to join in? Say yeah, hello? come on, Charlotte. Come say hello. No, oh, she just can, says hello. It's all right, it's not on film, it's audio. Can, can Charlotte ask a question? Answer a question or ask, ask one. Ask one. <laughs> Can't sh- oh, she's gone upstairs or something. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Right, here's a question, look. Right, just ask this for uh, for Jamie. This is for you, Jamie. Read out who it's from. It's from Josh. Yeah. And uh, Jamie, you went back to your dad's original documents for Firestorm. Did you add any of your own ideas onto the foundations of the characters, vehicles, or the genuine feel of what the show would be or should be. Nice. nice Thank you, done. Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Better yeah. than me. Yeah. yeah. Well, she, she come I again. Mean, yeah, Terry, do you want to just go yeah. now? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll be off then. Is that right? <laughs> Me bike's outside, yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's been it's been uh, elaborated on, added to. The the, the core is, is still there and pretty much intact. Um, but... Been sorry. Sorry about that. So I thought it was your wallet opening. Then. Is that a bin lorry? <laughs> yeah. What an amazing sound. Uh, Brakes, yeah. I think, or something. I don't know. It sounded very odd over here. Um, yeah, so the, so the Firestorm stuff, <laughs> is it's been elaborated on very much in the, in the spirit of everything Anderson to feel like a fully formed Anderson show. But, you know, the original stuff was written in the 90s. Yeah. So it's just brought up to date. A little yeah. bit more complex, uh, slightly different story arc, and some elements that you won't recognise from the anime series that was nice. made in Japan. Yeah, great. There you go. Uh, you were now, saying... I'm diving back into my yeah. last email before we Go finish on. up the voice of the Podstrons. Go on then. Uh, this is from Stephen. Right. It's very Stevie, this... Uh, uh, yeah, very Steve-heavy. 
Yeah, it's very Steve heavy. Uh, dear Richard Jamie Anderson, see what oh. I did there? Uh, yes. Wasn't yes. he in a million dollar man, Richard Anderson? Did million he play the boss in the six million dollar man, the actor? Different. I might be wrong. Go on, I carry on. One, one for no listeners idea. at home there. Yeah, mm. well, let, let's learn <laughs> listeners. Uh, currently listening to Pod 49 in Jasper, Alberta, in the Canadian oh, Rockies. Wow. Lovely. Uh, I'm on holiday. Ah. Oh. And should be in Vancouver when Pod 50 is. Well, welcome to Vancouver, Steve. Yes. Hope you're having a lovely time. Have a fantastic time, yeah. Um, oh, there's a great there's a great place. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll email you the details. There's a fantastic right. bar in, uh, in downtown Vancouver. Oh, know that. Uh, if I'm in time... Which you are. I have a question for Richard James for Pod oh, 50. that's me. That's you. Richard. Hmm. How did you get involved in the Mime Theatre project that performed Thunderbirds FAB and Thunderbirds FAB The Next Generation and any related memories? Any Mm. chance of a a reunion? Keep up the good work from Stephen. Thanks, Stephen. Thunderbirds FAB. So this was, yes, Mime Theatre Project. Who was? That was Andy Dawson, Andrew Dawson and Gavin Robertson. Uh, Produced by John Gore. Uh, I think their first uh, tour uh, was in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, perhaps. Uh, anyway, by the time we were doing Space Precinct in 94, Andy Dawson had done it around the world and in the West End. And in 1995, just as Space Precinct was coming to an end, I was giving Andy Dawson a bit of a hand to, to move house. And I actually, I remember we stopped at a, a petrol station to fill up the petrol, fill, fill the van up. And he asked me if I had anything coming up after Space Precinct, after mm. we'd wrapped on, on the series. And uh, I said, well, no, not yet. And he said, well, how do you fancy doing um, FAB? The uh, the Fab, uh, uh, not Fab Live, the uh, Thunderbirds FAB live show. Wow. <laughs> and I said, well, yes, yes, that would be interesting. Uh, because I've spoken <laughs> with Andy of uh, with, with Andy and with uh, with Wayne, who'd also been on Space Precinct. Uh, so that's really how it all happened. It just happened because Andy mentioned it to me. I then went along and met Tristram Shapiro, I think, Ooh. who I was then going to take over from. Uh, and I then ended up acting alongside Paul Kent, who had been doing it for many, many years. Uh, as to a reunion, well, I mean, I meet Wayne every now and then, bump into each other at some big finish stuff we've done with you, with you, Jamie, and also at various conventions and so on. Haven't seen Paul Kent since back in the day. Uh, haven't seen Andy for a while. Uh, but, you know, Facebook's a wonderful thing, isn't it? So we do all keep in touch. I hmm. saw Gavin uh, yes. about a year ago. He was doing a one-man Bond That's right. um, stage it was. show, That's which was right. very good. Yeah. But yes, maybe one day. I mean, I think we didn't we speak very briefly for I think um, the uh, uh, Andercon in Leicester about doing some kind of yeah, we uh, did. little three or four minute bit from the show uh, Thunderbirds FAB, but didn't didn't get get round to it in the end. But it might still happen one day. It could still happen. Yeah, be fun. Yeah, absolutely. So there we are. Thanks, Stephen. Interesting question about something that's not really often mentioned, is it? No, but perhaps. Time. We could try and get Andy, Gavin, you yeah. together for a for a chat about it. Oh yeah, yes. that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, fun, wouldn't it? Nice anyway, yeah. that is the end of listener emails ah. for this week. There we are. So, uh, yeah, thanks. That's, I do apologise for the uh, the sound of the bin lorry outside my, my window. Here goes the bin. <laughs> ah, he's got a bit of out. a problem. Hmm? It's just picked up my script. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Put it in the recycling. We yeah. just use it next uh, week anyway. Happy home uh, for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, yes, thank you, everybody, for getting in touch. Remember, you can send your emails to podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. You can get in touch with us either on our Facebook group or over on Twitter, just like Mar- Mark Wilson, for example, who has posted a picture of a Podstron T-shirt with the simple word, thanks. So he's uh, he's got his already, obviously. Tone got in touch and hashtagged us, hashtag Jerry Anderson podcast to say, superb interview this week. Uh, this is from uh, Pod 49 with Peter Holmes. He says, Peter seems a lovely bloke with the right mindset for Century 21 AP films, etc. And then Jeff Owen has asked, what is the music for the utterly superb Fab Facts? <laughs> I, it's, I think it's called Game Show Bounce. Okay. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a li- bit of library music we use. Yeah, great. Just, just going back... Just going back to that last uh, interview, Peter Holmes, yeah. I actually started work with Peter. That was the first uh, department I was working in on Terror Hawks. I was helping him with props and set building. And he is. He's a lovely guy. He really is. Yeah. There you go. So he's still with us, is he? Yeah, yeah right. I believe yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lovely. Yeah. Lovely to hear that. Good. And finally, Phil Steer tweeted, uh, slightly embarrassed to hear my name mentioned twice in the latest Jerry Anderson podcast, but still definitely worth listening to if you have any interest in any of the Jerry Anderson shows. So Phil Steer, well, we mentioned your name twice last time. If I say it, Phil Steer, 
steer again. That's three times this week, yeah, so you'll be very embarrassed now. How awkward. Oh, uh, Phil orcs. Steer. Yeah. Phil Four steer. times, five times. There Phil you go. Phil Steer. I mean, welcome to the Phil Steer section of the Jerry Anderson podcast. <laughs> Phil Steer show. I feel a new segment coming up. <laughs> Let's put that in for, for Pod 51. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Great idea. Uh, Terry, any more questions from our hashtag 50 questions? Yeah, I've got one from another Stephen. Right. Uh, Stephen Carson. Oh, yes. And it's to me. Uh-huh. Terry, can you please tell me the background of, to Dick Spanner's The Case of the Missing Episode? Mm-hmm. Were you hoping for a third series? Also, why did Jeremy Hitchin do the voice and not Shane? Well, yeah, we were certainly uh, hoping for a third series. Um, in fact, we were gearing up to do the third series and we did the first episode. And as uh, things in this business happen, the, uh, the money and the finance was pulled. Um, so we only ever made uh, the first episode. Mm-hmm. And I must admit, we never even cut it together. And it was only recently, uh, a few years ago, that I actually saw the whole episode yeah. cut together. Yeah. Also, why did Jeremy Hitchin voice uh, Dick and not show? I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, I, I don't know if it was an availability thing. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, no, and that was the reason. I'd say we were really hoping, for, we're always hoping for a new series of, of Dick Spanner, mm-hmm. but um, that was the reason. It mm. was um, the the money. Great. Very good. There in the end. Yeah. Any more? Any more for any more? Simon. Oh, it's one. Yeah. Ah, ah. I'm going to do it to oh, you. Yeah. Oh, go on. Yeah, it's there a, we go. It's a Space quick 1990 themes, yeah. season two, or power themes, 90 version. <laughs> oh, season two or power themes? Oh, crikey. Uh, oh, I've got to go for season two, I think. Season two. Yeah, oh, it's I a close can. call, that one. Thanks okay. for that. Uh, a little quick fire. Now. Yeah, you've got to be careful <laughs> with that. I'm trained, you see. Uh, yeah, it doesn't hurt me. After. Yeah. Craig Walker, mm-hmm. another one for you. Oh, yeah. You can go and have a cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, I might do. Thanks. <laughs> Richard. Yeah. I know you met on Space Precinct. Yeah. But what led you to working together 20 years later? Oh, me and Jamie. I I'm assuming. Jamie, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. led us work? I know, I often ask myself the same question. <laughs> you say working together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll put that in inverted commas. Messing about together. What led it? Well, I remember we sort of um, got back in touch, didn't we? Around just after your father had died, I think yep. maybe a year or two after. We were... It wasn't even that, me. was it? Because you, I thought you came to that... Um, the, the Jerry Anderson thing at the Space Centre, which is the March or April after it yeah. so only a few Brit months sci-fi. after. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay, so quite quite soon after, yeah. There yeah. we are. So, yes, we met up uh, for the first time, really, since 1995 at Brit Sci-Fi in Leicester. And, uh, well, the rest is history, Terry. The rest is hysterically. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> this is from Ashley Bell. Yeah. And we're over to you, Jamie. Quite topical now. Would Jamie ask Lee Majors, $6 million man, to play a role in Firestorm. Ah. Well, you never know with these guys because it's always down to their availability. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you you never know. No, you, you never, never know. know. Exactly. Um, I don't know how familiar he is with the Anderson shows. Not very, is my feeling. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I try, can't think of a character he'd be good for yeah. right now, but who knows after? Yeah, who knows? exactly. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like I'm a... Sort of a, a relate officer here at the moment. Oh, right. This is from Robert. <laughs> yeah. Assuming the pair of you met on the set of Space Precinct. Oh, yeah, we did. Did you ever think you would be friends this many years later? Well, who said we were friends? <laughs> yeah, you put that in there. That's, that's assuming rather that's a lot. you, it? Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, no, of course we could never have known, could we? We could never yeah. have known, really. I mean, it'd be a bit, a bit weird yeah. for a 10 year old kid to be like, we're going to be friends in 25 years, Richard. <laughs> yes. no, no, we're not, Jamie. I mean, yeah, no, you think not. no way. And also, when I first saw Richard, he was wearing his prosthetic chin and he yes. looked terrifying. Yes. And I was slightly freaked out by him. Yes. And I'm only just getting over that now. So <laughs> it was exactly. definitely unpredictable. That's right. Okay. Another one? Isabel mm-hmm. Saussier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Richard. Oh, yes. If they redid an HD Blu ray set of Space Precinct, All right. would you like to redub yourself oh. so that it was your voice? Or do you think it would be too strange now that people are used to how Owen sounds now? Right. So would you like to redub yourself? Uh, not really, no. I mean, I'm often asked that. I don't know. I don't think so. I think, you know, as much as it's a, it was a bit odd to be dubbed, I suppose, and it's the only time it's ever happened to me so far, um, I think actually it was Kieran Jakinis who did my voice, and I think it's a really good match with the character, to be honest, and I think it, uh, I think it is part of, of his character. I mean, I can do a pretty, a pretty decent impression, so if I were asked, I could probably pitch up and, and do some orange lines, you know, for a, a whatever. What, what, what sort of voice would you use? Uh, I'd be very camp Scottish, I think. That's how I always saw Orin. Should we, should we hear some? Oh, Romy! <laughs> 
I hear there's an APD out at section 94. That kind of thing, I think, would really suit him. <laughs> well, Orin's parents from Morningside. <laughs> it sounds like they must have been. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, so, uh, no, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I mean, I suppose if I were asked, I would, but uh, I have no problems with the way here and did it. Excellent. Jamie, this is from Dave Lawson. Here's my question for the 50th anniversary. What was your dad's favourite productions? Stories that he really felt proud of. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> I i mean, I think uh, Trapped in the Sky, the Thunderbirds, mm. remained one of his, his absolute favourites. And that's partly because it was based on uh, real life, an experience from his time as an RTO for the RAF. Um, where they had a, an aircraft come in to land which couldn't put its wheels down and had to kind of belly flop onto the runway. Wow. Um, and that that kind of drama that he experienced either in real life or via the news or whatever, that kind of thing, I would often inspire the stories that he was then most proud of. Um, so, I, yeah, I, d- I definitely put Traps in the Sky up there. Um, okay. And then probably things like... Uh, uh, well, other, other Thunderbirds toys, I think they really hit their stride there. But uh, yeah. yeah, let's let's leave Trapped in the Sky at the top of the list. Yeah. Okay. Nice. This one's from uh, Danny Moy. Yeah. It's going off off kilter slightly. Oh. What is your favourite Star Trek series and oh. why? As right. a lot of Jerry Anderson fans are Trekkies as well. Oh. So, what was your favourite Star Trek series? I think that's all three of us. Yeah. So, Jamie, go first. Uh, Next Generation for me, because that yep. was actually my first real exposure to it. Uh, and Pat Stewart mm. just yeah he he had the same vibe for me as Bergman in Space 1999 mm. and John Pertwee and Tom Baker as the Doctor that kind of thing where if they asked you to go and do something for them even if it was mm. dangerous you'd just do it so to yeah. have a, a, a hero like that in a sci-fi role great yeah. and isn't he making a comeback yes yeah there's all the trailer yesterday yeah, yeah yeah it looks very exciting i want to yeah. drink some picard wine now That's yeah, right. yeah definitely exactly yeah Richard. Uh, well same for me i'm afraid very boring yeah, next generation i fell in love with the show in the um 89 sort of 93 94 95 whenever it ran and uh yeah big big fan looking forward to the new series um yeah i mean i i've also always got time for the classic series as well yeah, bit yeah. Of kirk a bit of pick up a bit of a uh, spock and so on yeah. yeah as i'm the most in- immature yeah. so mature person here yes. i think yeah, i have to go back right back to the first series for me I can yeah. remember watching them and uh, Trouble with Tribbles oh, yeah. and uh, there was also one of my favourite I think it was called Piece of Action oh. where they went back uh, to a, a, a planet and it was like 1920s yes. gangsters yes. and they all but yeah and I, and I love William Shatner yeah. I thought he was brilliant lovely so, yeah I'd go back to a couple them. more a couple more uh, another one from Isabella mm-hmm. Saucier mm-hmm. Jamie would you say that being Jerry's son is helping you in your job as far as getting contracts and funding, etc., As people remember your father fondly and figure it's just a continuation of his work, or do you have to work harder because you need to prove yourself as a producer and show that you're not just Jerry's son? It's a good question. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, it, it's absolutely a blessing and a curse. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so as mum alluded to, she didn't allude to, she just said it in her interview, <laughs> yeah. um, dad did not keep in with um, kind of sources of finance and, and production funding in his later years, because he was very lucky he had Lou Grade as his patron for all that time. Um, Terror Hawks was uh, kind of brought together via Christopher Burr, so he was often reliant on, on partners uh, to come in, business partners, and, mm. and, and do that kind of stuff. So it, it's, we didn't have a big black book of of people to contact mm. and while the name gets you in the door in a lot of places which is great because a lot of people can't even you know get a response from yeah. uh, from financiers and broadcasters yeah. it does come with a level, certain expectation uh, which can be good because it, it, you know they might be a fan of the old shows or have some appreciation but equally there's a lot of feeling of oh that's kind of old hat stuff and uh, do do modern kids even like that so if they, you know so I then have to work very hard to mm. try and sell it as not just something that is a continuation of before you know mm. that these people are not interested in us putting the past on a pedestal and being like oh wow amazing of course um, so so trying to convince people of that. <clears throat> And the and, uh, and the positive reasons for you know continuing the Jerry, Jerry Anderson legacy is very very hard work. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's great for, great for door opening. Not so great after that point because it, it creates problems because of the the kind of preconceptions yeah. those people have. 
Yeah. It's all part of the yeah. adventure, though. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. That's right. Okay, well, another question. Uh, one thing about sort of uh, coming back to the Anderson uh, people and being yeah. involved again is you get to meet some new people and yeah. fans, and this is one that uh, has become a real good friend, and that's Andrew Clements. Oh, yeah. And we often have... Uh, pun wars over the phone <laughs> I can imagine you, yeah, yeah pun offs and you can imagine that last yeah. phrase but uh, this is Andrew's uh, question Jamie can you give us a completely out of context teaser word phrase or image related to a forthcoming Addison legacy project oh dare you there you go Andrew <sighs> probably probably <laughs> Oh, is that the word? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, that is a word that's that's definitely in there. Um, oh, okay, fine. Uh, this is this is it's it's not a word or or it's it's just some, some, something slightly different. Yeah. There is something that harks back to Dragon's Domain. <gasps> what? But that is all I will say. Wow. I won't, okay. it won't say whether that's a major element or no. a bit of an episode or time yeah. mention. It's there's, but Could there's something anything. there. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Right. Josh asks, if you had the chance to adapt Joe 90 for Big Finish, <laughs> what would the idea or the setting be? And by the way, I love the Secret Service idea. Oh, yes, yes. Was good. <laughs> In yeah. the chain, yes. So That's if you had a chance to adapt Joe 90 for Big Finish, what would the idea or the setting be? Uh, well, so we open in uh, the uh, offices of the World Intelligent Net- Intelligence Network, and Joe has handed in uh, his uh, resignation, and then we cut to the closing titles. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see Joe ninety as sort of like a bit of an older teenager, and when he gets asked to do something, I don't want to do that. Yes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so unfair. Fair, yeah, I've yeah. got to do that. I saved uh, the world. I saved the world last week. <laughs> No, I, th- I think, uh, again, it's kind of moving on, isn't it? It's the, the ramifications of having your neurophysiology repeatedly tampered with. Yes. And what kind of life would this guy be living in his 30s, 40s, 50s? Oh, could um, be a bit bleak, couldn't it? It could be a bit bleak, but it might it might be interesting. And maybe he yeah. knows stuff yeah. that, uh, that WIN don't want him to be out there with and he's using his skills and stuff that he's learnt to kind of avoid them. It could, could be quite interesting. Again, it's going a bit darker. Um, for an adult audience, because I just, you know, I couldn't bear the thought of of, of, of rebooting Joe ninety <laughs> as no, as it is right, right now. Great. Sorry, sorry, Joe. Good. Uh, more of those questions coming on a little bit later on. So people have been sending them in via Twitter and email, hashtagging us fifty questions. You can also get in touch on Twitter, hashtag us Jerry Anderson Podcast. You can email us at podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk mm. and don't forget to subscribe to us on whichever platform you're listening to us on. Rate us, review us, and share us with your friends. That would be lovely. Perfect. Yeah. Now it's been a slightly different format this week because of its uh, it's our fiftieth anniversary. But rest assured, listeners, some things never change. So perhaps it's time. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hello, everyone. Chris here, and thank you all so much for listening in to the Jerry Anderson podcast. Fifty weeks on the trot. Fifty weeks. How? 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 And why? And you're still here. My goodness. Yes, thank you all so much for, for tuning in and putting up with our our little mad goings-on. Well, let's be honest, they're mad goings-on. I know everything that happens on the randomizer is fairly sensible and um, and, uh, and we don't stand for any silliness, do we? No, 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 no. Uh, yes, thank you all genuinely from the bottom of my heart for all of the uh, very kind words that uh, you've been saying, not only about you know the podcast generally, but, I mean, specifically my stuff, because... I'm, I'm here. Uh, yeah, it, it's all very much appreciated. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of you in a few weeks' time at the uh, the Space Centre in Leicester for Pod 53. It's going to be a good one. Anything could happen. Well, no, it couldn't, but you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, yes. Toodaloo. S-I-G. Okay, carry on. It's Chris Dale. Hi, John. Uh-uh. Do you want too soon? I thought I might find you here. 
Is anyone with you? Yes, Marina's here too. We've come up here today to ask you if you'd like to press the button on the randomizer for us. Give me the details. Well, yes, one minor detail we have to mention. Uh, we forgot to bring the randomizer with us. Uh, what's that, Marina? Okay, yes, I forgot to bring the randomizer with us. I, I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why the call in? Oh, well, we were just in the neighbourhood. You know how it is. Uh, actually, I was thinking that with Thunderbird 5 able to pick up transmissions from all over the world, we might be able to use these switches and knobs and things to uh, maybe find something we could review. You don't mind me uh, using the console here, do you? No, 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 that's fine. Uh, Calling International Rescue. Yes, we'll just turn that off. Uh, right, what can we find? <laughs> No. No. This is the voice of the future. Definitely no. Keep listening to band 794, Lisa Beam 22. It's very faint. Well, let's hear it. FAB. This is station JR1. <gasps> that's Johnny Roger 1. That's it. That's perfect. Yes, a fine tale of a hijacked space station used to lure our heroes into a pitched battle for survival. Wow, wee, that's serious. Well, it's not too serious. I mean, it's only Terror Hawks. So here we are, back for some more Terror Hawks, and once again we are in Series 2, um, which is fine with me because I think I prefer Series 2 to Series 1, as I've said before, although it does mean that I've got more Series 1 to get through and there's already more Series 1 of Series 2 than anyway so um yeah i remember this as being a good one though with a very memorable villain so bring it on let's see what we've got with jolly roger one and straight away we have a lovely uh, nod to the very first scene in the very first episode we're here in the ruins of the nasa mars base which we never saw the interior of on the show because um, we only really had time to see it before it was blown to bits by Zelda um, to uh, to clear the way for her own own fleet of ships to land. Oh, it's so dusty in here. And obviously Tony Barwick remembered that there's there's this uh, ruined Mars base out there to plunder, and so too. Look at this. Did it start? Recording equipment. Interesting. I really like that it's... Uh, who does it belong to? It's Star, who has decided to investigate oh, the Mars base, because it shows... This is, I think, the third episode of Series Our. 2. So he is obviously very quickly <laughs> learning, not only about his family, in particular, you know, stupid old uncle young Star, who was here yes, stuffing his yes. face, but also he's he's honed in on the history of the conflict between humanity and Mars, and what did that start with? It started with the destruction of the Mars base. Is there anything there we could look at? Yeah, let's go have a look. And I can imagine that Zelda has probably been so focused on Earth that she hasn't hasn't even thought of that. done wrong now? Young star, it's late. Get to bed. But I just got up. Bedtime, I say. I love this intro as well, with it star tormenting young star with this recording equipment. Down, you Good morning, Moid. Moid! And that is the only mention of Moid. It's the only mention of Moid in the second series. And Sram only appeared once in the second series. I Over here, mine uncle. Again, it kind of hints that there is a life for those characters beyond those episodes, because it you sort of get the impression that they're stuck back in the freezer as soon as their plans fail. This kind of hints that they're, some of them at least, are free to roam the base, coming up with, with evil plans. I, I would love to have seen Moid's reaction to Zelda saying good morning to him. That would have been a, a, probably a very memorable quote from Moid, I think. Ha-ha! <laughs> Ahoy there, you swabs! Call me Cotton Goat! <laughs> Together with the devious boy. Yes, this is the introduction of Captain Goat, um, who is, I think, the only character. Oh, I love that laugh. I think he's the only um, monster that gets released from the cryogenic store in this season. I guess maybe having its star into the mix now was adding more sort of story potential 
than un unfreezing a monster every week. She has a fine spread of sail, I see. What's he talking about? A burst there, you scurvy And we don't swap. get any backstory for, uh, for Captain that. Goat at all. Uh, so no explanation of the fact that he is uh, appears to be a cyborg or something. Marbles. But he's wearing that little, that silly little hat. Sometimes it's kind of nice not knowing any of these characters' backstories. Firstly, because you can read in whatever you want, but secondly, it just makes the comedy all the more stronger. You have no idea what any of these people, where they came from at all. 1992. Abandoned 2004. Why should someone board an empty, obsolete space station? Well, like with most things in Terrorhawks that you can't puzzle out, it's uh, got to be no Zelda related. The enemy, Jim lad. They will be here soon enough, Herr Captain. Now remember, a disc jockey must be a cheerful fellow with lots of pep. Pep. Yeah, pep. Talk fast. Snap, snap, snap. That's Are one of my favourite yeah. bits of It Star dialogue. Again, I love the relationship between these By two. Because Young Star really was not... is not a credible threat on his own. Especially not by this point in the series, but even earlier on in episodes like... Ten Top Pop, where he's out supposedly running the operation, it doesn't suit the character. Whereas having these two out together, one as the genius and the other one who hasn't got a clue, it makes so much more sense. Announce the first record. For my very first record. A walk in the Black Forest. Character. Kestrel. Oh no, Kate Kestrel, okay, yeah. Yeah, pirate radio stations were a, a, a story idea in f quite a few, I think, cult series of the 60s when the huge, you know, the pirate radio thing was, was at its height. And I'm sure, obviously, there would have been pirate radio stations through the 70s and 80s. Certainly the 60s is like the kind of pop culture pinnacle of that that idea, both in reality and in, in stories, so it's kind of kind of strange that Terrorhawks would pull this up, but um, it works very well, I think, for this episode. It kind of fits the fact that you know we have Ricochet in the year 2065 is still up there um, producing his on his little pirate radio station. 2065 or 2026? Who knows? This is what I'm picking up, man. Listen to this. Hey, we get two Kate songs for the price of one. Always good. I know some people don't like them, but I love them. And now, a word from our sponsor. I am <laughs> that, little, that little musical sting before she started talking. Gorge upon the animal life. Hero, we've got to jam that transmission. Relay coordinates. So that's a nice nod back again to the beginnings of the series. Zelda was very much all about, you know, humanity is humanity sucks because X, Y, Z, all those reasons she listed there. Um, by this point in the series, she was very much sort of, you know, destroy the humans, destroy Hawk Nest, and all that stuff. She very rarely mentioned any of that stuff, and I think it was certainly an interesting idea to introduce for her to to be so aware of humanity's flaws. And for the show to uh, not really to challenge that. We are being jammed. Why do you insist on calling me this gym lad? Arr, all cabin boys do answer to the name of Jim. <laughs> so I'm just I'm looking but at the uh, your jib, Jim, lad. the little robotic <laughs> parrot that Captain Goat has on his shoulder. I assume it's robotic. It doesn't say anything or do anything. Properly functioning brain between the three of us. Minor. <laughs> Ours, of course. Of course. Oh dear. Yeah. It's, star is just, it's just a joy to me. I'm sorry, I know there are people out there who don't like him. I can't, I can't see it. I think he fits in beautifully. It's just one more level of zaniness Hero, for this otherwise crazy world. Ten-ten. We're gonna blow it 
and whoever's aboard to space fire and damnation. Um, you clearly heard Young Star's voice. Surely by this point in the series you would know who is on board that station. Oh well, never mind. I would like you tell Hawks to listen to something. Who is this? My identity doesn't matter. And I think this is also the first time the Terror Hawks actually speak to, to its star. These horrible men have captured me. Which means he can do this. And it's it's the only time in the series he can pull this trick. Help me! Please! They've got a hostage. A young girl. It has to be some kind of a trick. But they can't I want be sure. Talk. That's 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 the genius of of using its star in this episode and putting this episode so, so early on in the second series. And when's your birthday? It's uh, the twenty first of October. That's today. Oh, Good. we have an actual uh, date given in an episode. No more questions. I'm not convinced. That's unusual. I don't believe you're holding a hostage, don't you? We could try and check it. Missing persons computer, Tokyo. No surname, no year of birth. It's impossible to check. You're right, Tiger. Well, you could at least try. You know, it's a Jennifer from London, even though it's not real. It's okay. like... Uh... All right. Kate and I will go ahead and Hawklet to be totally sure. Hawklet, oh, yay! Fire. Is this the uh, first appearance of, of Hawklet? Uh, I think it might be. To be honest, I get a bit confused with Hawklet and Hawkspy and which appeared when. And uh, I think this is the first time we we see Let's Hawklet. Scan. Scan set. We'll make one. Which is just a tiny little cat. shuttle with no room to swing a cap. But uh, cubes, evasive action. Give him a broadside, my hearty. So now we've gone from Ricochet into. Uh, Set sail for adventure from Stingray, really, with this. It's kind of a nice amalgamation of uh, two classic episodes from the Super Mario Nation shows. This is great. And it's, it's such it's something Tony Barlock seems to be so skilled at, particularly with this show, taking all these sort of disparate elements that really shouldn't work combined and somehow making it all, all run smoothly. Of you scabs, hoist the mainsail. I'll whistle us up a fair wind. Like, there's really no reason for Captain Goat to be here at all, because he doesn't actually do anything. It's the cubes who are doing the firing. It stars in charge. Young stars manning the radio. All, all Goat's doing is watching the window, but it's so much, so much more enjoyable with him here. You know what day it is, 101? Tuesday. You. <laughs> it's October the 21st. I love this show. Trafalgar Day. So what? The Battle of Out of all the shows that have been released on, on DVD and Blu-ray, and, and obviously that is essentially all of them, I really, I really hope people have had the chance to, to look at this again if they've dismissed it previously, especially the later episodes like this, because by now it is just... There's a, a beautiful, almost elegance to the way this the, some of these Series 2 episodes are constructed. Make provision to repel borders. It's like it's it's as silly as we it ever got in the first season, but somehow now it absolutely works. Steady as she goes now, steady. And lovely shot of the uh, the pirate ship lining up alongside Space Hawk. Again, we get some of these overlaid explosions on each of the models, which I was never. I think I said previously I was never keen on this. Look at that! Fire at will. Remember Trafalgar. Give it to him, lads. The Trafalgar thing is maybe a, a step too far. This is always already looking nice and nautical. We don't necessarily need that to. Despite not being willing to uh, set off too many explosions on the model, they certainly love trashing the puppet sets in this show. This is terrible. Get it up, you flea-bitten swab. We need new sails! <laughs> yeah, I love how Goat is utterly prepared to go down with the ship. No, I must stay with the gallant captain and face my destiny. I'm going. Well said. You're a bright one, Jim lad. It was nothing. Uncle Youngster, wait for me! So it star manages to both be a, a 
hero and a, a complete coward. Beautiful. And they've just abandoned Goat to his fate. They've left him on the uh, the disintegrating uh, radio station. Fires, but they won't take old Cap Goat alive. I'll warn the flag and laugh as I goes off the end. Tis a long way down. Very strange uh, end to Captain go. Goat here. <laughs> Just throwing himself laughing into the void of space. Um, for seemingly no reason. Because he seems so set on you know going down with the ship, and now suddenly he's like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw myself overboard. Lovely shot of the, uh, the satellite disintegrating there, though. And this is lovely, too. Stand down, hero. Ten ten, Doctor. Because they weren't sure, and they would they don't know if they it was terrible, blew a little girl to pieces or not, and they're never gonna know. Then the Prince of Pirates will fight other battles. Mm. Well not in this series he won't. Fellow Captain Gold reminds me of an old problem. Which is a shame because he made a really strong introduction, I think, in this episode to Captain Goat. Lives to make an even bigger fool of himself another day. <laughs> well, you should know you were the one who, uh, you were the second one off the ship after Youngstar. Not as stupid as him, but uh, almost as bad. Anyway, that was Jolly Roger 1. Yeah, again, as with, I think, probably two thirds of the episodes in the second series of Terror Hawks, another really good one. Again, showing off how uh, how much of an asset it star, it star was to to that show and a lovely homage not only to to sort of old naval type battles in, in films and shows and things but also to as I said the Supermarination shows with Ricochet and Set Sail for Adventure it's a kind of an odd um, mashing of the two that seems to work quite well Captain Goat is another lovely character not given as much to do here as perhaps other monsters I don't know if they ever planned for him to come back in the TV show if it had gone on longer but uh, luckily Captain Goat also returned in the audio series in uh, series 3 more than 20 years after he first appeared that's quite something yeah Terror Hawks well, who doesn't love a bit of Terror Hawks yeah a bit of Terry we've got our very own Terry Hawk yeah thanks Richard <laughs> for preempting my gag uh, right here so mm. Terry any specific memories of Jolly Roger 1 and Captain Goat and the you know those that one of those early stories for, uh, for uh, It Star especially uh, making use of that girl voice yeah no oh um, <laughs> what <I'm>, <laughs> it's it's when, when you're doing these sort of programs like they, they sort of each episode sort of merges into one yeah. And, I, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. I, I remember the title, but I can't remember the any of the effects on that one. Mm. Um, I have to say, also, we we generally uh, we don't always get an opportunity to hear these randomizers until they go out. I don't, I don't hear the randomizer until. No, I'm not gonna say that. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Cut all this, because yeah. otherwise that destroys the whole thing. Where we go, oh yeah, Chris, that's interesting. It just, it just Sorry. ruins the illusion. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Leave all this out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but uh, no, 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 hearing hearing Chris chat about it, it did bring back memories of uh, working on Terror Hawks. Um, as I say, I had a great time. I started off in the art department. We've already mentioned Pete Holmes and all the puppeteers, and I was helping build the sets and had a great time on that. The other week, uh, well, I think it was last week, you was talking about hands in shot, puppeteers, hands in shot, oh, yes. uh, and things like that. Yeah. Well, if you watch most of the Terror Hawk episodes, especially the the first few, I think my fingers are in it more than the Zeroids. Um, because <laughs> if you watch when the Zeroids bounce off their uh, perch, that was generally me underneath with my fingers flicking them um, and then when they bounce back on it was in reverse so you see them bounce <laughs> and just become it's like me waiting down there wait to catch it yeah so um yeah i've been into terror hawks as well so yeah <laughs> so I, I was on uh, there and then i moved over to the uh, special effects and had a fantastic time working with uh, steve and the crew yeah. and uh yeah, really great times, and they're, they're, I I tend to remember more the explosions that I did. I know we did one explosion, and it was before the days of health and safety, and we were all saying, you know, let's get out of the studio. It's going to be quite good. And me and Steve just stood behind the door, and it blew the door open. Um, and then the <laughs> other one was the overlander going over the bridge. 
fantastic setup and pulling mm. that all apart. But as I say, they they all because you because of the nature of the the schedule, we were literally doing one after the, each other, yeah. you know, and they, it got to the point where they they all merged in as uh, yeah. as one. But I shall go home and I shall watch it. Yes, and uh, on the hundredth. Um, podcast when Come you invite me back I'll tell you all about it <laughs> perfect <laughs> yeah. thanks Terry well there is there is a lovely shot of the kind of the, the radio station space station disintegrating and uh, and uh, being completely destroyed and that was probably down to oh the that one yeah so. yeah I remember that yeah that was brilliant He's bluffing. Nicely done. Oh, I, 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 we, can, we can hear that. Thanks, though, Terry, for being a very useful guest Thank uh, you. about that particular book. Uh, All right, Craig, it's time for the last uh, quick fire questions. Then. Uh, so, Jamie, Sergeant Major Zero or Dizweet? Zero. Eagle or Interceptor? Eagle. Gabriel or Spectrum P- Patrol Car? Uh, SPC. Penelope or Zelda? Zelda. Right, uh, Jeff Tracy or Colonel White? Jeff. And finally, podcast or Fab Live? <gasps> podcast because it means I get to see you every week, Richard. Oh, oh isn't that lovely? Nice. You see, you're never that nice to me, no, Terry. That's no. why we only invite you once a year. Yeah. You see? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And just time then, before we say goodbye, to mop up our last 50 questions that people have been sending. Yeah, we've got about half a dozen left, so we'll go through them very quickly. Yep. Okay, here, Jamie. If you could write an episode of any Jerry Anderson series, including Candy and Andy, which would you choose? <laughs> Um, ooh, I think maybe UFO actually. Ooh, yeah, could yeah. could have something quite fun and and grim going on. I, I know every time anybody asks about the reboot type stuff, I always come up with something darker than the original. Yeah, and UFO feel, feels yeah. a very natural place for that. Yeah, yeah, great. And 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 on that line, from Josh, I'm sure if there would be an issue with rights or licensing, but would or could there ever be a big Finnish adaptation of the new Captain Scarlet? Ah. Uh, yeah, rights issues aside, which there may be, uh, potentially there could be. Yeah. Um, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I, I know Big Finish would like to do some more Anderson stuff, um, mm. but we're all just very busy. Exactly. Uh, so let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay, uh, another one from Sol Pinto Rivizi. Uh Jamie, and you you must come up with the ultimate, most insane Jerry Anderson crossover, which must include every show. <laughs> Even the unmade projects and unaired <laughs> pilots. Off you go then. <laughs> so as, as if you haven't got enough to do, you've got to come up with the most insane Jerry Anderson crossover. We'll, we'll come back to you in a week's time and see what you've done. <laughs> no, we can do it now. <laughs> go go on, on then. What are your thoughts? No problem at all. Uh, <laughs> a benevolent alien force, this is the investigator, Yeah. comes to Earth to create... And on land, in the air, under the sea, uh-huh. uh, and a lunar um, uh-huh. rescue organization, which yeah. is essentially an amalgamation of International Rescue, uh, WASP, yeah. WIN, yeah. Shadow, um, etc., etc. But he decides that they need to be uh, miniaturized uh-huh. um, to uh, infiltrate the dark and weird world uh, of uh, Candy and Andy, <laughs> uh, a ring of... Uh, criminal pandas who uh, have uh, uh, mannequins that have been brought to life including Candy and Andy and Dick Spanner um, and some other things Mm. Uh, and just as they finally defeat them uh, and the miniaturised WSP are patrolling the solar system they see an alien invasion fleet uh, which is Zelda and co Um, and uh, they are then the, the benevolent alien uh, creature which miniaturized them is destroyed by Zelda. <gasps> and so this group of tiny third scale people must gather together the best tools at their disposal um, to take on this force. And at the last minute, Captain Thrice and co turn up from Lambda Castle and kill Zelda. Fantastic. <laughs> can, wow. I, can I just say that Jamie has just done that yeah. off the cuff. Yeah. That's- Brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, that would work. You, yeah. There is one thing you've forgotten, of course, in the very final reel, I think, just coming over the horizon, who should we see but... Oh, Romek! <laughs> they're this way! <laughs> that, yes. Then, then it would all have been lost except for yeah. the final appearance of, uh, exactly. of Oren and, and Romek. OK, we've got time for just a couple more questions. Yeah. Go on, then. Tom Hodden. Yeah. Richard, did Jamie see you doing the Thunderbirds mime show thingy? I don't know. Did you, Jamie? No. <laughs> but did you ever see it? Anyone yes, else? I did. Yeah, uh, there was a bit. There was a big uh, one. I think the after, it was a 
first run in the mid 80s and yeah. late 80s or, or very early very very early 90s there was a big kind of relaunch yeah uh, somewhere in London and mm. we went there and Great. it was incredible because yeah. they gave away the the cardboard international rescue hats, hats. Yes. and in the foyer everybody who was there waiting to go in was already putting their hats together and they, they, there was a sea of yeah. grown-ups wearing international rescue Lovely. cardboard hats Lovely. Um, yeah. bizarre fantastic show I remember seeing that yeah uh, Abby wants to know in Thunderbirds where does the Tracy money come from back in the day being a billionaire ex-astronaut would have covered it but nowadays it doesn't even with the best investments those billions will soon go with equipment repair fuel etc yeah. cost for the vehicle alone yeah so are they still playing their loan back yeah yeah <laughs> yes I, I suspect that jeff took out lots of uh, loans i mean if you increase everything with inflation yeah then obviously he would be a multi multi-billionaire yeah uh, and also i assume that you know there are some little underground links with with governments and other organisations where they want this to carry on because actually the International Rescue are doing doing fine work. Yeah. So it's not just about the money. They've got yeah. support coming from elsewhere. Or maybe he had an accident at work that wasn't his fault. <laughs> <laughs> and made a claim. Imagine the call. Hello, Claims Direct. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Hi. <laughs> yeah. How many accidents have you had? Five, four, oh. three. Oh. Okay. okay, final Terry. one today. It's from Jay and it's quite fitting. Okay, guys, Professor McLean has been asked by Wynne to attend our Leicester gathering oh. in order to record your brain patterns for future mission use. Ah. For what skill or what sort of mission do you think Joe Knighty might find your brain pattern useful? Right. Oh, I don't know if they did that to me. It cost them too much for the search fee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can make a really mean spaghetti bolognese. I think that might come in useful. Sure, he can find a use for that. Mm. That's like my superpower. Jamie? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> it's good when you can't even think of one of your own useful skills, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, going without sleep for extended periods yeah. might be a useful thing, mightn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sort of <laughs> insomnia-based uh, mission. Would be would be good, or also if he if at any point Joe had to eat an entire tub of ice cream. Yeah, you're very um, good at that. But a, yeah. you know, which was a very challenging volume. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty good at that too. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah, nice, very good, excellent. Well, there we are. So that's just about all our fifty questions done and dusted. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So is that literally fifty, or was it yeah. near enough? With a few near quick, enough. Yeah, yeah, with a few quick fires as well. Great. So uh, yeah, well done, everybody. Thank you so much for sending them in. Thank you for joining us for our 50th anniversary podcast. Yeah. What Thanks, Terry. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, Terry, for coming along. And Absolute know. pleasure, it says here. <laughs> um, no, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Great. So we're, we're on our way now in the next couple of weeks, 15th and 16th of June. We will be at Leicester for our 53rd podcast, I think it is. Yeah, it'll be somewhere around there. Something. It's meant to be 53rd. It might end up being 54th, depending on editing <laughs> yeah. and various yeah, things. Sure, but yes, yeah, sure. it's, our, it's our anniversary podcast yeah. anyway. So if right. you haven't got your tickets yet, do visit the, uh, the Space Center's website where you can uh, book your tickets and find out a little bit more about other guests, including, I think, Chris Thompson's going to be there and Lee Sullivan, Graham Bleethman, uh, and, of course, Jamie and myself and Chris Dale. And I'm sure there'll be others on the day as well. Uh, it'd be lovely to meet as many of you there as possible. And we'd love to see you, uh, as many of you as possible, in your Podster on T-shirts to yes. create a sort of Podster on army or cult, depending yep. on yeah. you know, how you think of these things. Yeah. Uh, and perhaps we can do a nice photo on the uh, on the day before or after that podcast, yeah. uh, just showing how many people came along, which yeah. uh, I'm quite excited and scared about. <laughs> yeah, that'd be lovely. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Right. Yes. We're ready to tuck into the cake. Yeah, shall we, Terry? Yeah. Oh. Sounds a good idea. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, what have you got planned, Jamie? You've got anything yeah. nice there? or? Is um, just... I'm working and I've got yeah. no food in the house, so okay. thanks very much. You're welcome. And All you've right. got the pot like, laid on? That's yeah, really yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Make yourself oh. a cup of tea. Yeah, it's it's okay, you can do it. Anyway, uh, yeah. we've got to go, Jamie. We yeah. can have a little bite to eat now. All right. Yeah. So we'll see you Bye. next time. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.
lovely. Oh, yeah. This is adorable. Yeah. Yeah. So you made it, she made it herself? She did. Yeah. It's yeah. lovely. Mm. Now there's Rosalie Nadlam. Yeah, lovely. lovely cake. Pass over the champagne. Let's open Excuse that me. champagne. Excuse me. Here we go. No? Oh, uh, cheers. You What's could have that? at least hung up before you started eating. Oh. I have to watch you with crumbs oh. all over your faces and... Oh, sorry, Jeremy. Oh, Terry sorry, dribbling I, tea there down his chin. I didn't, oh, sorry. Didn't realise it was uh, still there. Um, okay. Um, like what? a biscuit. Yeah. Chocolate bourbon. <sighs> Please put that cake in the post, otherwise I might cry. Let's cut up a slice and send it over. I will do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> go anyway. away. Champagne, Terry. Oh. <laughs> 